This is it. Yeah. <laughs> the big show. The grand race. The <laughs> body 5,000? That's bot is in robot, not yeah, like yeah. the oh, human body. okay. God. That makes way more sense. <laughs> that makes way more sense. Oh, whoa. Sorry, I just realized that StreamYards has changed the, uh, has given new sh options for the shape of our, our name tags. Oh. We got bubble now. We can't be trusted with this kind of power. This is this is more power than I deserve. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Unplaytested the Stream. I am one of your hosts, Lara. And I am the other of your hosts, Alex. And we have uh, some wonderful guests with us today. Uh, Simon and Adam, you want to introduce yourselves briefly in that order? Sure. Uh, <laughs> my name is Simon. My pronouns are he, him. Uh, I am a tabletop role playing game designer, voice actor, professional GM. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Color Spray Game. Uh, sorry, not Color Spray. Jesus. I'm thinking about doing a rebrand, is all. Uh, <laughs> I'm on Twitter at Lucha Libris. Uh, that's, that's me. I'm very excited to be here. I have no idea what this game is aside from that it involves giant robots and racing uh, and Aaron Katana Saez. So it's got three of my favorite things in the world. <laughs> yep. I hope you actually know anything about racing, because I don't know if anyone else does. <laughs> I certainly don't. <laughs> nope. We'll we find out. Our <laughs> expert. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Adam. Uh, I have a chicken farm. Um, I also make games and stuff, but that's, I guess, not as important to me. Uh, I'm also super excited to be here. Bye, Adam's chicken. <laughs> 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 is that even possible do you have like an online arm of your chicken farm uh, we, don't, we don't we definitely don't ship our uh our chicken from our local farm now <laughs> do not buy adam's chicken that would be illegal thank you thank you alex for the promo <laughs> incredible uh, so today we are going to be playing metal rush limit breakers uh which is a game that we have just designed uh, courtesy almost entirely of Aaron Catano Saez, who just sort of came on the show and then, like, a game fell out of his head, fully formed, like Athena leaping from the skull of Zeus. Uh, it was very convenient for us, so we basically just wrote it down and, like, <laughs> figured out how many sides the die should have. Uh, I think we ended up on eight. Eight. Did we, do we have, like, a, like, a particular, uh, reason behind that, or do we just like eight-sided dice sometimes? I'm trying to remember. I, I believe the reasoning was it seemed good at the time. <laughs> wow. That's it. A behind the scenes view into the game creation right here. Folks. That's, that's how, the how many of gears the can you shift into in the standard uh, manual transmission vehicle, right? It's a <laughs> neutral, first, second, third, fourth, park. Uh, you're almost reverse. there. <laughs> reverse. And, and hyperdrive. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Yes, uh, definitely genders. a lot of consistent world building uh, going into that die choice. Uh, so I think we are about ready to roll. Uh, do we want to do the, uh, what do we call it, the, the flavor paragraph at the start? Sure. Who, who has the best voice for reading uh, dramatic paragraphs? Oh, I kind of want to I kind of want to do it now like I'm a like I'm a racing announcer. Uh, Sunday, Sunday, that. Sunday. <laughs> okay. I wish you the best of luck. Go for it. <laughs> All right. You're riding high on 10 tons of aircraft grade aluminum held together by 10 rolls of dollar store duct tape. With each thundering step of the massive mech, your entire world shakes and shudders. But you don't care. There's work to be done. Scramble down the ladder into the chassis to stoke the reactor, then swing by the left arm to see if you can't tighten some bolts and get it working again. But don't take too long, because you gotta climb back up into the head and take your turn in the pilot's seat next. And whatever you do, never, never, never take your eyes off the finish line until you get to the shrine of the silver monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Just realized that's what I was doing. <laughs> hey, it was good. It was good. It was good. Yeah, was I'm great. feeling it. I'm. I am pumped. Okay, good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Extreme. Oh, someone else read next. <laughs> I have to take a break. <laughs> sure, I'm. I'll, let's, I'm jumping straight into rules text, babies. Let's do it. Your bot, right. Create your racers. You're racing a giant robot. That's awesome. Let's talk about that. <laughs> 
This is something you should be coming up with as a group. Broad outline. What does a straight-from-the-factory model of the robot we pilot look like? Are we piloting a giant humanoid or something shaped a bit more oddly? Are we talking shiny chrome, tarnished brass, or rusting steel? Importantly, this isn't what our mech looks like. Our mech is unique, an extension of us and everything we've done together so far. Our mech might bear no more than a passing resemblance to its blueprint. This is its starting point. This is also the place where we're going to like figure out what the broad like genre we're working in. Is this, you know modern day except nascar uses giant mechs or are we going with steampunk are we going with futuristic are we going with bio hellscape in a flesh mech who just said that for me <laughs> that i said for that an for audience me of too. one person okay good it's cronenberg's talladega nights yeah <laughs> uh i personally am like a real big fan of like cowboy bebop level of technology like obviously futuristic and we're in space but also like everything's broken and sucks um Ooh, yeah you know like all the technology is super advanced but none of it works right and it's all kind of rusty and old yeah i'm feeling mm-hmm. that I'm into mm-hmm. that. that sounds right. perfect uh and are we doing giant humanoid mech or are we doing something altogether weirder Well, I think your standard uh, mobility forms for for mechs, right? We have our our bipeds. Mm-hmm. We've got our, our our quadrupeds, our our tractor treads, kind of <laughs> right. With spider mech, uh, I'm imagining like all the different permutations because it's it's pretty hilarious to think of like a marathon, but everyone's in a giant robot sprinting down. <laughs> Uh, a giant concourse or something like that. Um, but I think some kind of like sp- weird spider mech kind of thing uh, would be yeah. pretty sweet. Like big, big tank mm-hmm. things. What was that? Ho- was, it, was it Peter Jackson who did the movie that was like, we have turned cities into tanks? Uh, oh god yeah what is that why do i not know about that it's like a a post-apocalyptic sci-fi thing like london and mortal engines mortal engines oh my gosh never heard of it i'm going you know what i can't do the stream i gotta go watch check that out doing a quick (laughs) quick two-hour break so we can all watch mortal engines but i don't i don't know about that scale per se but i do like the idea of like big oh those are those are big boys Yeah. yeah Those are very big. Um, there is also the option of doing like kind of like trying to find a happy medium of like spidery, you know, robot with eight legs, but also like humanoid torso and arms and head. <laughs> <laughs> like centaur like a, spider. A spider mech. centaur. <laughs> a giant robot spider tar. Yeah. Okay. I, I invited the right people on this show. I'm feeling so justified right now in my choice of friends. <laughs> so we're saying the standard prototype is all of the mechs start out as like a spider centaur. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. it makes it makes sense from a world building point of view because the humanoid biped is very unstable and like shitty. It doesn't make it's... any sense. It's just not a good design. At least we should have our knees going back the other way, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, I feel like uh, people started with that. They said, oh, we want to race these, but they keep falling over. And they just kept adding legs. Yeah. <laughs> Crabator. <laughs> add two it's... more. Nah, add two more. Nah, you know what? Add two more. The, the carcinization of mechs also applies. All, all forms evolve towards the crab. Oh, I love it beautiful all right uh so if we're going with that uh the next thing we're doing is our relationship uh figuring out how our racers know each other this is sort of a broad overview of our relationships which we'll divine a bit more in a second uh our conceit is that a mech can't run effectively when it's filled by strangers so we are all incredibly close forged by the bonds of racing uh so are we friends uh from way back who never lost touch A family making a legacy together, survivors of a terrible event who have become a support network for each other, lovers in one big metal-clad polycule, or maybe we started as a boss and employees but have become a found family. 
So do we have anything anything that's making us really light up? Like when I was reading that section, you know, each each piece I was like, Oh yeah, I wanna do that one. Then I would read the next one. I'm like, Oh yeah, we gotta do that one. <laughs> yeah. I'm really I'm really very excited to do any of those options. Yay. Hmm. We could be a rock and roll band. <laughs> nope, we are a rock and roll band. <laughs> oh god. Your mistake was making that a possibility. <laughs> oh no. And so not the really, fact. I was going to say so I'm always a fan of like people who come from one background who are forced into another way of life for various reasons. And like oh, a a rock band of some kind or a, some music group who is forced to like pivot hard from the music business into the high stakes world of mech racing. That's <laughs> just, how do you think that amazing. transition happened? I feel like it's got to be like a, a situation where there was some sort of weird corporate merger and like the, uh. the record label we had just gotten a big deal with was like, oh, now we're a mech racing plus record label and we actually need you to change your entire thing (laughs) yeah in addition to pumping out album after album for us we also expect you once every two months to compete in the like stompy murder robot Mm -hmm. cup (laughs) you know just to really nail that kind of sci-fi dystopia we have we have a recording studio inside of the mech and we like record some some vocal tracks in there during races because oh my gosh intense. like you can really feel the emotion uh-huh that's amazing mm-hmm. this is very good yes <laughs> <laughs> oh so yeah we uh i guess we, we are we do we own this mech are we like leasing it from the corp yeah i feel like the studio has to own it right mm-hmm. we're just yeah it, it's definitely sponsored. It's got mm. all kinds of stickers all over it. Oh, gross. Yeah, Ca- Captain Amazing in uh, Mystery Men just mm. slathered in logos. Mm. Just like a real racing yeah. vehicle, right? Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Exactly. It's like breakfast cereal brands all over it. Uh huh. <laughs> That's the so edgy good. but polarizing music genre of mech rock. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> And it, it's got to have the percussion is from the mech's spider legs hitting the ground. Like, <laughs> that would be great. 100%. Except, like, you know, bass boost that and then turn it up 4,000%. Exactly. Uh, I'm, I'm really liking where this is going so yeah, far. I'm, I'm feeling a very strong Mega's XLR kind of aesthetic here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm, I always I'm forget. tremendously enthused. Oh, All yes. Right. I'm looking up Mega's XLR and it has big feet with flames on them. <laughs> but rock Mega, yeah. you know? Yeah, baby. That's very good. Uh, I'm thinking we also, like, totally hate our music label, right? They are the oh, man. Oh, God, of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Deal with them because we have to. Right. We could never we're, afford this. We're Mac trapped in a contract. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. You're kind of tricked into signing it. There's just there's just some fine print like on the back that says also you have to go into death races with giant robots. It's pretty standard these days. Uh, my lawyer missed that part. Ah. All right. So for our characters, we know our relationship with as a group, but who are we as individuals? We're giant mech racers and musicians, obviously. Uh, but we are going to personalize ourselves a little bit more. So on our spreadsheet, we will be writing down your name and pronouns, including your racing persona, or I guess your rock star persona, if you have such a thing. Yes. And then your background is a, a short sentence of where you are from, why you're so involved in mech racing, you know, particularly, or or why you were involved in music first, I guess. That could make sense in this case. And uh, do you want to talk about primary roles for us, Laura? Oh, uh, yeah. You got... I, I guess they're effectively your your character classes uh, in that while we are all working on this mech, we can all pilot the thing. We can all fix it more or less. Uh, we do have... There are different primary roles to play. You could be an engineer, uh, primarily focused on fixing stuff, a manager who is kind of the face and talking to people role, 
a driver who is just the best at running that dang old console, uh, a caretaker who really is focused on the other people uh, and making sure they're doing okay, and a lucky charm who um, doesn't really have a function, but things work better when they're there. Um, and your primary role will give you a, a sort of a question to ask uh, and answer about the mech itself, a relationship to establish with the... I say the player to your left, but I guess in our current uh, form factor, the player below you. Um. <laughs> that only works for two of us. Uh, well, I guess if we're in a in a line like yeah, this, right, yeah. Right okay, now okay. we're in a column. So, and and I guess uh, what is it? Oh, and your limit break, which is your fantastic uh, super superpower. Your superpower. Oh, delicious. It's your thing that uh, you can do. So very quickly, I have one question about the rules, and that is about the limit break. Mm -hmm. yes. So the rule with the limit break is you can use it whenever you want, but it spends all the stress that you have. Right. Yes. It doesn't say you have to have any stress to use it. So you just use it over and over. And over. And you can also only use it once. Oh, there we go. Oh, I'm there pretty go. sure we wrote that down somewhere. <laughs> and and if we didn't, we meant to, and that still counts. Yeah. Well, may have. I'm not a very good reader, so. <laughs> That's the exact type of person we like to have on the show. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there are no there are no problems with this game. There is nothing will be changed because nothing needs to be changed. It's perfect, mm -hmm. unrevised. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. So, yeah. Oh, and uh, there are five different primary roles. We can double up on them if we want, or simply not include one. We don't necessarily have to have a main driver. We don't need an atom driver, uh, in our band. Um, oh boy. If we. <laughs> if we don't care to. Uh, no. <laughs> so I suppose, does anybody know or have an idea of who they are and what their role is? Uh, I think I, I have a bit of an idea. Um, mm. So I'm really interested in playing... Uh, uh, is, is, the, is it called an engineer? The uh... Yeah. Yeah, okay. Because I'm thinking my character is like, uh, is like just like a total, total gearhead, always like off in, in like the, the, you know, bulkhead somewhere, like messing with wires and screwing things in with a little like radio that's just like blasting like guitar solo heavy metal, right? You can tell <laughs> from anywhere in the, in the mech exactly where he is because you just listen down the hallway for which way the heavy metal's coming from. Nice. Nice. Infinite guitar solos. Uh, yeah, I think that's yeah. So I'm definitely interested in in the engineer. But perfect. And what what do you play in the band? Uh... Sub question. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good question. You know, maybe I play the bass guitar. Ooh. Okay. It keeps everything running, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The the. Uh ill-appreciated backbone of the team. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to be ill-appreciated, but I feel like bassists usually well, are. Well, typically, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Proud rock tradition. <laughs> exactly. It's not rock and roll if you don't turn the bass guitar down in the mix. <laughs> <laughs> I guess as the counterpoint, I'm kind of feeling like the, being the driver, to be honest. Heck yeah, uh, do just it. Just leaning into the full-on anime vibe of like a uh, lead guitarist who is just like <laughs> overconfident, crank everything up to 11. Uh, just, we're getting the finish line one way or another. And I don't care <laughs> how many engines we have to blow to do it. <laughs> Amazing. Let the basis deal with that. Exactly. Right. It's not my oh, job. <laughs> I love the combination of the like lead guitarist who will smash a guitar at the end of a performance with now that person is driving a giant robot. <laughs> yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the energy we're going for. <laughs> awesome. Oh, okay, so what is... I kind of want to be the drummer of the band. <laughs> and but this should just always have you be musicians. <laughs> it's, it's too good. Uh, it, well, that, isn't that the whole point of finding out, like, playtesting this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think uh, 
Yes, everyone everyone who uh, backs our Patreon can vote on games that we have to do a second <laughs> version of, uh, whether we want to or not. And uh, you can make us turn this into an always musical game if you want. Ooh, I like that. I think I'm going to be the lucky charm. Heck uh, yeah. That sounds fun to me. You just run around and help things out and fill in the cracks. Nice. Oh god, this does leave us lacking a vocalist. Yes, so it does. High. Love it. So there's anything I love, it's the sound of my own voice. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna, I th I feel like manager is the role uh that that most dovetails with that. I'm the I'm the face, baby. I'm nice. the one who's out there talking to people and making deals. Nice. Uh I also like so. to think that we have like a record label appointed band manager, but you are like what, who we all consider the band manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the real one. Yeah, exactly. The real band manager. Oh, maybe oh. like the three of us were a band and you were the manager. And then like, we only later on were like, wait, you can sing really well. You should be <laughs> in the band. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. <laughs> So what do we want for like a naming convention? I'm feeling with our slightly near or our, our slightly futuristic grungy cowboy beboppy setting, I really want to have a name that's like Jericho Sidewinder or just like really, really go hard, you know? Oh, absolutely. I like it. Is like, it too on the nose to just name Jericho myself Jericho. Crash Metal? <laughs> no. I don't think so. <laughs> That's very I, I, good. I think that's perfect. All right. Hi, I'm Say the more Crash I'm Metal. Vocalist slash manager. <laughs> and since there are four players, I start with five stress beads. Uh, I feel like my character is the type of edgy sort of person that would in a world where everyone has over the top names would want to refer to themselves as like the coolest one syllable name they can think of oh uh, yeah so i call myself zane and i look just like a <laughs> guilty gear character for sure oh that's very good <laughs> that is very good Belts i have a everywhere. friend named zane and i think they would be very touched to hear that Saying exactly is a great uh, Seattle area puppeteer. In case you ever want to go what? see a puppet show after the pandemic's over, <laughs> yeah, exactly. they're so cool. Super cool. No, Sidewinder is my first name. <laughs> of course, <laughs> <laughs> you can't have anything uh, any less tame. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Now I have to think of an even cooler last name. I mean, it could be a simple last name. I feel like Sidewinder Smith. It's gonna <laughs> zing. I'm, go I'm gonna do uh, right. Sidewinder Endymion. Oh, that's... Whoa. Damn, that is very good, though. Yeah, I didn't know... I was like, that's some sort of cool mythical figure. <laughs> Apparently he was a handsome shepherd. Oh. <laughs> oh, a handsome shepherd prince, loved by it the fits. moon goddess. So, all right. Okay, Shepherd Prince would also be a pretty good name. Right? Shepherd that Prince would be a is pretty a good name. name. Uh, yeah, we're going with Jinx Inferno. <laughs> but no, Jinx is spelled with a Y. Right. Mm. So good. That is tremendously good. Oh, and you can also toss your character's uh, pronouns next to their name there. Yeah, which so we get to. Uh, we're gonna fill uh, all five of our stress boxes, right? Yeah. yeah. So you start with five stress beads. Nice. There we go. We'll we'll see how good this unchecking uh, check boxes to represent <laughs> spending beads translates. 
I can I'm imagine even... perfectly. Yeah, well, I'm enthusiastic. Visual. Oh, hey, audience, you haven't seen this thing I'm very impressed with. Oh, bloop. yeah, it's really I got good. a D8. Bloop. Kabloop. Wow, I'm oh, rolling really poorly. Those were poorly. not good. Can you, like, <laughs> zoom in on it? Uh, maybe. No. Fair. <laughs> bloop. Wait, I can make it uh, bigger, though. Yeah. 72. Bloop. Nice. There you go. Now that you made it bigger, you rolled better. It just <laughs> needed... It just, the oh, number God. got bigger. It gets better, baby. Too big. Stretch there out the cell. You're good. Bigger's always better. There we hey. go. Hey. hey. All right. <laughs> Gonna have some hijinks. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh... Uh... Uh, <laughs> sweet we got characters we got characters that's fantastic oh and we, we should... have some uh some questions to answer yeah. for our characters so you'll have a question uh and a relationship uh which are unique to your little playbook so you can read those over and be thinking about them while other people are doing theirs uh Mine looks like it's a little dependent on some other stuff being established, so I'm going to wait for mm. other people's first. Hmm. I guess I, I put myself at the top of the list, so I might as well... Uh, you might as well. Kick it off. Might as well kick it off. I might as well. So, as the manager, everyone knows how the mech works, but I know how the game works. The delicate art of making deals, finding sponsors, and branding. Uh, my question, what's the disaster that our robot walked away from? Or I guess scuttled away from, as the case may be. <laughs> the truly epic screw-up, which uh, I have decided not to ignore, but spin into a victory story. And that is... Oh boy. So this is gonna this this was years ago. Like this was right after the big mech racing band merger happened. Uh we were we were young, we were dumb, um I was drunk. I don't know about anyone else. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know if this was our first big race, but it was definitely early on in the process and somehow we had gotten, we'd gotten that firm lead, baby. We were, we were zooming on ahead. We were miles in front of everyone else. <laughs> when what happens, tragedy strikes. Someone, I'm not going to name names, but it was definitely me, may have spilled her beer on the console and shorted the damn thing out. Oh. Suddenly, eight big metal legs flying every which way, tap dancing down the canyon. It was through a canyon, did I mention? <laughs> oh my. Crashed into the wall. Suddenly, rock slide, rock slide from on high. Us unable to move, rocks pouring down from above. The other races coming up behind us. Friends. It was the bloodbath. <laughs> Robots was crushed. People was hurt. It was a real bad scene. The race wasn't able to be completed because that canyon got filled in. And boy, do we owe a lot of money to a lot of people. But at the end of it, you know what happened? We was still in first place. <laughs> we won the canyon collapse, no matter what the judges say. And I won't let anyone forget about it. <laughs> Canyon Collapse was the name of our third album. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of our band? Oh, that's a... We have no idea. Mm. I, feel, I feel like, is the name of our band and the name of our robot, are they the same or like directly that's, related to one another? That's just good branding. Yeah. In which case, that we decide later. We decide okay. robot names oh, later. I think God. band okay. names go, go with that. Cool. Um, relationship. Uh, the player to my left, or the player below me, uh, has a bad public image. Whether earned or not, the audience hates seeing them, and their presence on the team has cost has cost us. Well, yeah, wow. they're the drummer. Uh, oh, brutal <laughs> and accurate. I, uh, why don't I ask them to leave? Oh, 
So okay. So now I have to figure out why why don't the people like you? Um Sidewind Sidewinder. Sidewinder. <laughs> oh boy. That is a good question. Are you why are you I... are you a getting into scraps <clears throat> kind of guy? Are you uh Hmm. I think I am Hmm. What's like the most annoying thing I could be? <laughs> a drummer. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, uh, heartburn on drummers out of nowhere. I love you, drummers. You keeping the beat. Yeah. Godspeed. I think that I'm. Oh, it's hard to think. I want to say that I'm really annoying to everyone. Uh, like, I think that I am constantly jumping in and interrupting the other bandmates when we do, like, interviews, but then I don't get to the point and, like, ramble on for a really long time. Ooh. Like, Sidewinder oh. is one of those guys who I... will go up at a convention and be like, Okay, so I have uh, one question. Oh, it's actually, it's like a two-part question. Okay, so I have two questions. The first one's really more of a comment. have two parts. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Like that. Oh, God. I God, just what? really love to hear my own voice. And that's what? I'm not Don't allowed to do vocals to for the band. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's no reason. Um... No, no, I, I like, I have, I have put my, my little foot down that Sidewinder stays on the band, and why? Uh, is it because, is it because you're just a damn good drummer? No. I think I'm I just like... a really good drummer? You're, no, it's not that. You know that. what it is? You know what it is? Mm. You're the fastest drummer I've ever met. <laughs> the fastest. <laughs> not skilled, but just beats no. per minute really high. And not sometimes like, not on that's tempo. what the music needs. <laughs> not on tempo. <laughs> we have to adjust the tempo to compensate for Sidewinder. <laughs> the real noise rock. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. People are like, you could just have a six-year-old drum and then like turn it up really fast and i'm like yeah but you didn't <laughs> oh um oh and of course my my uh, limit break is the ability to tell you all about a hot new sponsorship deal which lets me immediately craft a new component and stick it on the mech because it's uh you know an acme brand third missile launcher it gets, it gets dropped down by a crate Mm -hmm. like in worms armageddon oh um, hell yeah parachute <laughs> now you're speaking my language <laughs> all right who's uh who's up next i think if we're going down the line that's me as the driver here cool uh so while i'm at the console i don't just pilot the mech i control it the smooth seamless union of will and action that we take for granted in our own bodies so I guess I have a question about the question. The question that I have is, what's the hiccup, the weird point of failure that you've never seen in another robot, which everyone who drives needs to compensate for, although nobody does so with quite as much panache as you? Is this about a problem that this mech specifically has? Yeah, this our mech specifically. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and, and when it says, which everyone who drives needs to compensate for, everyone who drives this mech specifically... Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, I have like two if, ideas. If you've ever had a car where it doesn't turn on unless you've hit the uh, the freaking windshield wipers for some right. reason, <laughs> like that. Yeah, to put it in neutral, wiggle the stick, yeah. <laughs> not pump like the that. Brakes no, three times, like <laughs> and then turn on the hazards. I can turn the key, right? Yeah. Um, I, I I feel like it's it's one of two things. One the, the first thing that came to mind is there's some kind of resistance. Uh, in the uh, in like the steering, uh, where it's like it's really uh, like forceful or finicky, um, or I maybe mean, it's loose actually. Like the controls are just too loose. Oh, that's uh, amazing! Like they've come after being battered around, and so you have to have <laughs> incredible control to keep it running. The other is like the the heat sinks are all fucked up in here, 
right? So it's just <laughs> constantly overloading. And so it's like, oh, I'm, I'm, it's almost more of an engineering problem at that point, I think, where like it, basic functions will cause this thing catastrophic overheating. So you have to like reroute power in live time through other different <laughs> sections to keep Amazing. it from... Some part of the mech is always like steaming, rippling hot. <laughs> right. Well, I'm imagining like there's nuclear power cores and stuff that are just <laughs> constantly flaring up. Amazing. <laughs> I kind of want to do that because I've got this fire theme going. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. I think the problem is that we have these nuclear power cores that give us incredible power, but uh, this thing could overheat at any minute. And so part of what I do as a driver is keep it running from my end uh and kind of take different uh different different paths than a, a traditional driver would um in terms of like like weaving and steering and and like slamming on the handbrakes and stuff to to keep it from like if i just had my foot to the to the floor the whole time we would just run out so it's just like mm. pump coast pump coast kind of thing that's so good uh, no, we we can't go in a straight line with this thing. That would be no, suicide. No, we're, just like, we're like ice skating, <laughs> <laughs> weaving around constantly, which Ooh. gives us an edge. It's it's twofold. <laughs> um, I also imagine that like I that Jinx was a a pilot before becoming a musician, mm. and that's partially why they're able to to manage this. Like why oh, cool. I used to race these things on the street like hot rods. Uh, and then I got into the music scene because that was more reliable. And then we got bought out. And now I'm doing the same fucking thing, <laughs> <laughs> which is why I know how to do it. Because I'm used to like uh, kind of handling uh, these like beat up street racers that are just overclocked to hell. Um, that's so good. For the relationship, the player to my left. So that's that's crash metal. Uh came in with no driving experience, which makes sense <laughs> as a manager. Yeah. Uh, they very nearly caused an accident the first time they tried. You took the time to teach them everything they know. Why was it so important for you? Uh, I mean, I think the most obvious answer is that if we don't have everyone running at 100%, uh, then we all die. <laughs> <laughs> Like we lose, but we also probably die, especially yeah. in this mech. Um, yeah, I love I, that you took the most dangerous possible sport and then made it more dangerous. <laughs> right. <laughs> we can't. We don't have a choice in here. We can't afford any liabilities on this sucker. Um, so I think that's like what I put out as the like the main reason, and I think under it. Um, I think there's probably something a little more emotionally resonant. It's like, listen, uh, like maybe I feel bad for you or like as a, there's an old friendship. Uh, maybe, I mean, we might've had a pre band relationship of some kind. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Like we, we had a, a like maybe a, a, a thing that went up and then it, fell out and now we're in kind of this weird i don't know space but maybe i think we can make it work okay Wait, are and you thinking like weird x x relationship or just like are, are are we lovers are we lovers friend? i feel like kind of are okay <laughs> yeah or, or former yeah no i'm super yeah. down with that i think yeah. it's the, like the the will we or won't we uh situation that a lot of bands struggle with <laughs> <laughs> uh and my my limit break is slam the nitro which immediately fills up the power bar nice okay i'll go next for my character sidewinder and dimion uh <clears throat> So as the lucky charm, I don't have a function, really. I do grunt work and carry messages, but there's no real expertise I bring to bear, and yet the bot runs smoother with me there. So my question is, what's the problem nobody talks about? The thing that's about to break and we all know it, or the situation that'll ruin it, ruin us if it comes up so we all just pretend it won't? I want to say that uh, a particular one of our nuclear reactors 
we call like old faithful because it's like <laughs> it's like this this cherno alpha like super old like crazy powerful but really like sputtery and cantankerous nuclear reactor like it'll be like running at full power humming along just suddenly shut off like down to zero percent out of nowhere and then like somebody has to go back and kick it in the right spot and it goes right back to working perfectly and we're just (laughs) worried that one day someone's gonna kick it and it won't turn back on but like it's out of date like no one can repair it because the parts don't exist anymore so we're just like well it provides like 38 percent of our power most of the time <laughs> so <laughs> yeah but if i think good that's luck a... nuclear reactor we can't get rid of it yeah <laughs> it's been with the mech the whole time it's like cool. the only part that's never been replaced the only original part left <laughs> Uh, uh, so the player to my left is struggling with something, a personal demon that doesn't actually affect the robot, but does reduce their ability to get the job done. What am I doing to help him out, and why is it so important? So to my left is Adam? Am I yep. doing that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So do you have any thoughts about what your problem is that you're struggling with? Um, I think that I'm really conflicted about our our like record label situation i just feel like mm. i feel like a sellout you know like uh-huh. i don't know i'm like a deep underground metalhead kind of guy and i just nice. something about what we're doing feels ingenuine to me and, mm-hmm. and i think that mm-hmm. it really it really hurts my motivation that's great man it's interesting because i made a character who is kind of an asshole so i'm like how am i helping you with that is it just by like being a dick about it being like (laughs) so what we sold out now we're able to eat we can't eat you know making a a record that makes people cry right maybe you're just like so confident and enthusiastic that it's just like spreads you know yeah i'm like cool why don't you talk about that with me while we lay down another track (laughs) yeah right and then I just start going, and you're like, okay, I guess I have to play along <laughs> with that. <laughs> Great. Oh, man. Can't wait for my character to get thrown out of an exhaust port. <laughs> uh, so cool. I'm, I'm helping you out because I feel like, yeah, we don't, if you lose your motivation for the music, then you lose your motivation for the racing and then you're going to like quit the band, right? Oh, big time. Big time. I'll go start a acoustic solo project <laughs> with one bass guitar. Just me and a bass guitar. Yeah, <laughs> that's so good. It's not plugged in. Oh, and you'd be amazing at it. Like you would definitely be the breakout hit of the band, right? But uh, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> it's in an alternate universe. <laughs> and my limit break is a fuzzy dice. Uh, after it's rolled, I can flip the die over to its opposite side, turning a 1 into an 8, 2 into a 7, etc. So we'll see if I save that for the last critical moment or just totally blow it early. <laughs> or if I try to save it later and then we uh, roll a bunch of 4s in the middle and I'm like, no, come on! <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for that. Uh, so I think it's me next, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here we go. All right. So <clears throat> I am the engineer. I wriggle through the deepest, darkest corners of the mech with a big wrench and a gut level instinct for what to hit to make things work better. And a gigantic boombox blasting guitar solo heavy metal. <laughs> Question. <laughs> the innards of this mech have seen a thousand ad hoc repairs and adjustments. What's the least likely fix that's still active? The thing that should have broken immediately but still holds are the thing that shouldn't do anything but makes the bot run faster by some sort of technological magic. Oh, so uh, so I think that this is like the the joint where the humanoid torso meets the spider body of our neck. Like that part that kind of holds the torso upright. really broke a long time ago but we couldn't get proper funding from the record label so there's like a giant rubber band like wrapped around it <laughs> on the 
and I probably have not told you guys this because I just am worried that it'll it'll destroy your confidence and that you'll think that the ship's gonna explode. Because you mean you mean around like its spine? Uh huh. Yeah. Right. Like right around like the sort of with the bottom of the spine. You know. That's very good. It's what holds the whole thing up? You know. Um. And. And uh, yeah, yeah. I think that it's extremely dangerous but the way that it makes our ship work better is because of the way that we have to kind of dip and and swerve all the time uh this kind of unstableness allows the mech to throw its weight around a little bit better and makes it like a little bit faster every time we (laughs) shimmy back and forth the rubber literally is helping it to spring (laughs) exactly exactly oh that's beautiful so uh, for my relationship, it says the player to your left, uh, which is going to be Jinx, uh, is inco- is isn't incompetent, but stuff tends to just break around them. You always have to keep an eye on them, but why don't you mind? Uh, so, <clears throat> I mean, I feel like this is something Simon that you kind of built into your character concept already, being like lead guitarist driver that doesn't care, like no matter what happens, we're going to reach the finish line. Right. So <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. Um, but I think I don't care, um, because, I mean, maybe you're the one that, like, that, like, invited me to be a part of this band, right? Maybe I was, like, a mechanic on, like, you know, some city in the clouds somewhere, just kind of fixing ships and just you know, jamming out to heavy metal and and you came in and like, you like brought this ship in and met me and we're like, Hey, you know what? (laughs) Uh, So I feel kind of (laughs) not, not necessarily indebted to you, but just like, I, I appreciate you and, and I could never be mad at you for breaking your ship all the time. That's what kept me in business back in the day. Right. Right. (laughs) That's so good. What did you even hang around this chop shop for? Like you're going to make some real money. (laughs) Yeah, could be in a heavy metal death racing band. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and my limit break is wrench of power. Instantly repair a component at any point during the race. I love it. <clears throat> so my Guilty Gear character, Zane, who has belts on his arms and legs everywhere, definitely yep. uses like a wrench as his main weapon. But like for his his like specials, he like swings his bass guitar and hits people in the face with it. <laughs> That's amazing. Good. You yes. when we uh when we finally designed a fighting game TTRPG, you gotta bring him back on. Done. Done. All right. So we have characters. That's great. Our next step is the thing that I've already done, which is build our racetrack, which is right hey. here. Hey. Uh currently we aren't really anywhere, but we're gonna be effectively on the first leg of the race and in trailing position. <laughs> Um, but we don't name the robot just yet, because first we need to do what is called the build, where we get to do some fun personalization to our sweet robot, who we love so much. Uh, everyone will have an opportunity to create a component of this robot and tell a little story about it, to take this from a thing we're piloting to a creation that we have a connection to. Um, so everybody gets to to make a thing a thing you know a thing a thing a thing thing on a robot you know like things on robots yeah i've if anyone if no one else has their thing that they've come up with yet i have been thinking of what my thing might be during oh rock and roll creation so it says in the rule book that you might want to draw your thing so i've taken this time while we were making our characters to draw my thing yo what oh can you see it Yes. Oh, right there. Right there. Our mech has a giant guitar, baby. Hell yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it uh, does. Uh, called the Flying V with two cartoonish bubble letter exclamation points next to it. Um, mm. And I think that, like, you know, our mech can, like, strum this gigantic guitar with, like, foot thick guitar string wires on it and and when it does it just like rings out a, like a chord so loud that like the sonic waves just like push everything back and like break through stone <laughs> and yes yeah, break down obstacles and push things away from us all right this is great 
follow-up question. Tell us how we got this thing. Because <laughs> this is not a component that you just got off the rack. So we, no. I need to know the story of the Flying V. Well, so the Flying V, I think, is something that I had before I was even a part of this band. And maybe it's the reason why, uh, you know, Jinx was drawn to, to my shop all the time. It was just kind of chilling in there. This gigantic guitar oh, kind of yeah. leaned over to the side, you know. Um, I uh, I mean, this is a piece of history for me. When I was just, when I was just a teenager, I was at uh, a Vanguard station, a... Uh, a like station where they build or all sorts of like robotic parts it's where i was like training i was an apprentice to become an engineer and i was like you know a total hot shot i thought i was at the absolute shit um and there was this this like engineer he was super popular very talented musician and he had invented the flying v and was in the process of building the first one mm -hmm. and i think things maybe got a little heated between me and him at the bar one day and i and I challenged him to a race, <laughs> knowing full well that I was going to lose. Uh, but uh, maybe like something happened and, and he uh, his his ship got like messed up. And maybe he like, oh, no, you know what happened when we something he didn't know. There was a there was a, a, a planet nearby and we were like racing through space and 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 I was able to like in the last second when I was about to lose this race, like fly my ship right into like the orbit of this planet and have it kind of slingshot around uh, and just like you know go super fast. Yeah, <laughs> using the the orbital gravity of the planet, obviously, you know. Yeah, of course, the, the John Crichton maneuver from Farscape. <laughs> <laughs> right, just things that happen, and uh, and you know, last second I beat him in this race and won his his flying V with two bubble letter exclamation points next to it. That's so let me so add that good. to the spreadsheet so that it's proper. Thank there. you. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Un uncouth of me to forget. <laughs> so that's one. What else have we got on our sweet robot? Sidewinder, Jinx. I want to say that we have. You, you said that we had. Uh, we're we're not using creepy living things for for our general thing. But I feel like we're we're in a sci-fi world. We're going to space. Our mech has all of these different spider legs that it's using to walk around with. But I think one of them is just a big old alien tentacle. Uh, <laughs> That we we managed to snip off some sort of like weird, uh, giant you know alien kraken sea star thing that just grew it right back, um, so I think it's like a, a big long tentacly thing, but it's of that kind of armory, uh, sea star like material, oh, and uh, and it can like regenerate, so it kind of like you know if if it takes a beating, it can kind of come back. So that's one of our it's our best leg. Uh, it's the leg that we don't need to replace. You just need to feed it. <laughs> so we got a Kraken tentacle. Yeah. <laughs> now, out of curiosity, were we supposed to fight a Kraken on this particular race? Or did that I, just kind of I feel like we happen? definitely were not. I think that was the sort of situation where... Uh, this was a this was a race that had like a a water component to it where you were supposed to like hop along these islands to get across this ocean section and we just like shoulder checked somebody else and we both fell into the water and then there was like a big whirlpool as this huge kraken just started like drinking all the water sucking everyone down uh, and we basically managed to get away we get out of the race we cross the finish line we're in eighth place or something, and then we realize that one of the tentacles of the thing is still wrapped around the mech holding onto it, and it's just come <laughs> off. They were like, well, I mean, we could just sort of like, just sort of plug that in to replace hey, Zane, one of the legs Hey Zane, can you plug that in for can us? You just plug can that you... in? Oh, I hate when he does this. <laughs> <laughs> I have an idea. <laughs> Reluctant building ensues. Oh... Uh... This is good. Very good. 
and its name is yeah i think we can just call it a call it a space a space crack and tentacle okay that's better it's good to know it's from space and not just yeah. a boring yeah, earth space. kraken yeah all right jinx do you know what your component is I've been thinking, and uh, we've mentioned the the idea that we have to, like to do some slightly unconventional movement, uh -huh. and I I don't think that rollerblades per se is very punk rock, uh, <laughs> but I want to have some kind of like fun propulsion system. Um, did any of you ever play Virtual On, the the robot fighting game? No, no, but I'm. It was like it, it was like right Tekken uh, on the PS One, but it had mechs instead. Oh, nice. Like you're always doing these fun, like kind of bursts, uh, like mm. circle strafing with like your 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 boot mounted rockets. Oh, sick! <laughs> that oh, would just kind of like so cool. let you do the the like classic mech fight. Like Armored Core too does this, right? Where you're kind of like sliding around. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think it would be super super cool if we had uh, like some kind of thrusters like that, or like scythes. Scythe feet, scythe feet, scythe legs. Scythe like we're feet? kind of like, like skating around yep. on yep. scythe legs. Oh, I see. Like, like I scythe down. Yeah. Nice. I, I I don't know logically how any of that works. Don't yeah, worry. like death scythe. We don't ask. I questions. love death scythe. Yeah, maybe they're maybe they're uh, they could be energy scythes like death scythe, and that's why they uh, they can go through lots of different materials without getting oh. dull. That's cool. Ooh, like there's so a one. It's your thing. Like there's a gravitational field around them, also. Mm -hmm. So like, there's the energy, the hard light or something, right? That cuts through materials as they need to, but also there's a field that works as a repulsor. Yes. That they kind of like you kind of kip up off of the the momentum from slicing into something, and that propels you further forward. So we're just like shredding our way across like this the cool. racetrack. That's so good. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Tara Kraken leg and sliding energy scythe legs. Energy uh -huh. scythe legs. Where did we get these? <laughs> that's that's the question, isn't it? Um uh and this is how I got it too, right? I acquired this. Mm -hmm. I think um, I think Jinx pulled this out of one of their like old contacts from street racing, right? Because street these mm -hmm. there are there are rules in this racing division <laughs> <laughs> to a certain extent, I imagine. A but a surprising this, amount of any rules. <laughs> This tech, I think, comes from like a janky idea that someone pulled in an old race that they were in. I think they lost to someone um, in a street race that had this kind of like scything technology, um, and uh, they're like, "Oh, I, I gotta, I gotta know how they did that." Like that, that was you. You robbed me of my my victory. Uh, Might have even been the race that that caused them caused jinx to be like i'm giving up racing i can't mm. do this i can't keep up because this guy was willing to break all the rules to get it done and i was holding myself back and yep. so when the uh before we got into the division i think jinx made a, a trip back to their home planet and found this guy um i was like listen i know you've been out of the game for a long time but i need I need this tech, and they're like, oh, "I'm, I'm, I'm retired. I'm out of the, I'm out of the game. You know, I can't go back. That stuff was too dangerous when I was doing it. You know, I'm, oh. I'm grown. I've got a family to think about. I can't get be getting dragged back into this. Like, no, no, no. This is corporate. This is all different. It's gonna be all above board. I just need <laughs> your magic. I need your eyes. I need, I need to know what you did. Um, and uh, and we had a, a real bonding experience as we kind of did this for old time's sake where I, I roped I roped this person into directing a team of engineers into recreating uh their uh their blade racing technique. So this doesn't look like it's bolted on. This is like it's meant for 
it's perfectly adapted to the mech. Nice. That like I good. pulled some strings with corporate so that we could have the budget to make this work. <laughs> so cool. Very cool. All right. Oh, God, it's my turn. Folks, imag imag imagine a, a common, ordinary spider tour robot. <laughs> right. <laughs> Giant. Of course. of course. Guard variety, factory standard. And then bolt on to the back, to the to the shoulder blade zone of your spider tar, two gigantic robotic bat wings. Yo! That when they fully extend, instead of a fleshy membrane betwixt them, there are are like plasma arcs. Yo. Okay. I All want right. to be clear. These do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they do not help us fly. They do not help us navigate. They weigh us down and waste energy when deployed. But they look so bad ass. Y'all, yes. do I even remember how I got these? Uh, you know I do not. I was out. <laughs> It, we were, we were, you know, we'd finished a race. We came in like fifth, so I was ready to celebrate. Uh, that meant going out on the town, and it turned out there was a party at the plasma factory, is the best I can recall. Uh, and the last thing that I can distinctly remember is pointing to one of those dweebs and challenging them to a drinking contest for a reward of my devising. And when I woke up, like, 2.3 days later, I was in a junkyard, curled up, on top of a pair of giant plasma bat wings. Let's oh go. my gosh. And I uh, convinced you all to come get me, <laughs> and both these on to the robot, because they'll help, y'all. Guys. Boys, friends, these are the things that we need. Because when we don't look threatening enough, bazow! Yeah. Plasma yeah. bat wings. I mean, you say they don't do anything, but they look cool, and that's like the most important thing you can do in right. Ragnarok. And presumably, when we use the mech as a stage for a rock show, we can open up the wings to like provide light for it. Exactly. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> um, well, I'm glad you're all into my giant plasma bat wings. Oh, and yes. This is a beautiful, a beautiful robot. Kraken tentacle, guitar, bat wings, scythe feet. Oh, um, yes. Friends, feet. what is the name of our robot? I think just that. Kraken legs, scythe feet, plasma bat <laughs> wings. We could talk our robot. <laughs> it could it could be some sort of an acronym. Crack bat. Mm, nope. No. <laughs> we, we don't have crack. enough vowels. Like no. V E S K B P W. Almost no vowels. I want to say that it's like it's an acronym, but no one knows what the acronym is. <laughs> like, it's a really cool word, and we put periods between all the letters. Mm. But oh we yeah, told anyone what the acronym is supposed. But to like be. a big word that it would be nightmarish to figure out what the actual acronym is. Yeah, like yeah. Chimera, right? Yeah, all oh, these different it. things put together. There it is. I mean, that's real good. It's Chimera. <laughs> the badass tech. Badass tech. <laughs> <laughs> that's all good I'll, I, I like the sound of chimera as an acronym that that's that's speaking to me yeah that's that's very cool yeah yeah i'm into that i'm into that uh listeners you can figure out what the acronym for chimera stands for and tweet at us at unplaytested that's also our band name right that yeah. is also our band name, yeah. 
it's one of those infuriating band names. Oh, like, we're KMFDM. Yeah, we're we're like Godspeed you, Black Emperor. Black you Emperor, have to have to go weird. <laughs> My Black Emperor, Godspeed you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyone, anyone, anyone who correctly again. identifies what Chimera stands for wins a free copy of uh, Metal Rush Limit Breakers. That's. <laughs> Am I authorized you... to give that away? Yeah, sure. Okay. If, you, if you already have it, you get a free copy of whatever our next game is. Oh, wait. Is Chimera spelled normal? Or oh, is it definitely. There's got to be a Y in yeah, there. Yeah, it's got to be yeah. Chimera. <laughs> I apologize. K I was a K -H -Y. fool. Is that what they put in tonic water? <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. There's like a. There's like a. There's definitely some symbols in that name somewhere. Um. <laughs> like an exclamation mark. <laughs> yeah. It's got the. It's got the. Uh, the British uh, pound symbol that looks like the fancy E. Yeah. Oh yeah. And every letter's got its own umlau. <laughs> <laughs> Just everyone. Everyone. Oh my god. with an umlau. What does that sound like? I don't care. Yeah. All right. What do, what do we got here? <laughs> oh, that's good though. God, yeah. Yeah. Now we're like real elite speak. <laughs> mm, mm. <laughs> okay. Wait. No. The robot is called Chimera with acronyms. But the band is spelled <laughs> differently. <laughs> the band is spelled like this. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, that's 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 <laughs> that's the only um, way it can possibly work. Powerful. The only way. Yeah. Um, gang, we are about ready to do a race, aren't we? Yep. Uh, that being said, we've been here for a little bit over an hour. Do we need to take a brief, uh, biological break? A biological tentacle break. <laughs> a biological plasma bat wings cracking tentacle. Do we need to go oh, polish the... our plasma wings? <laughs> hmm. That seems good, yeah. Take a little, yeah, little five to eight minutes. Okay. Okay. It's uh seven oh eight, so we'll be back by seven fifteen. Sounds good. Cool. Work on um... your acronyms while you wait. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Thanks everyone.
Hop in, losers. I'm Crash Metal, and we're going to race a giant robot. That's amazing. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so excited. (laughs) What an entrance. What an entrance. I'm doing my part for Chimera. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so good. This does not super want to fit on over my uh, headset, but by God, I'm going to try. We have to suffer for our art. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, uh, yes. Duh. All right. Jinx has disappeared. I'm, I'm so in love with this outfit change. Like, <laughs> the production values here, it's amazing. <laughs> That's because we're professional. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. I, I don't just bring out a denim jacket for anybody. It's because it's cause <laughs> Chimera is special to me. Yeah. Yes. Right. Uh, speaking of which, I decided to uh, change my character name. I feel like Sidewinder and Demion was not quite doing it for me. Uh, my character is now going to be Sidewinder Novocaine. Uh, Ooh. Because I think the meaning of the word Novocaine uh, has been lost over time. And so I assume that it is not uh, a dental anesthetic, but in fact, a supernova that is also a hurricane, the <laughs> coolest thing ever. So uh, that's that's actually my new name. That is super cool. <laughs> Would that I could be. A Sidewinder Novocaine. Nova Sidewinder Novocaine. <laughs> It sounds so good, though. Yeah, no, yeah. It does. I like I like the sound of it much better. <laughs> uh, gang, are we ready for phase two? Phase one was the build. Phase two is the race. I'm so ready. Excited. So ready. This this is this is the one that matters. This is for all the money. Yeah, uh, this we're is gonna the be, most uh... important race of our careers. Putting our lives on the line and seeing if the wheels stay on or fall off. Also, our characters will be doing that. <laughs> what an apt metaphor. <laughs> uh, so here is a first question. I, like I say, we're about to do the race. No, we're going to do some more scene setting. Because yeah, this obviously. is a lot of this game. Why does this particular race matter so darn much? What, what, is, what is this race? really good question i feel like it's got to do with our contract with corporate like if we it, we we've negotiated a deal where uh if we come in first in this race then we will be able to like get out of the contract and if not then we're locked into it for mm-hmm. like five more years oh yeah uh, yeah, yeah for sure okay. maybe that's like the, that's like a clause in our contract like We've been excited for the last six months that, like, our contract is about to run up. Our contract is about to run up. And then last minute, they were like, well, you didn't read the clause that, like, when your contract runs up, it renews unless if you beat oh. all of our, you know, race race pros in a race. Mm-hmm. We're, we're racing for our go. freedom, man. Exactly. The contract oh. will keep renewing forever. <laughs> All right. Because I think it's the sort of thing where, like, we get the mech if we get out of the contract, right? Like, that's the dream. Now we own this mech and we can do whatever we want with it. And this is our baby. We yeah. own the mech and we own the music. That's that's all we need. Mm-hmm. Except not any of our previously released music because that's still... Right, on. legally they know. still own all of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That. Right. <laughs> Yeah, but we can we can shell out new tracks really quick. Thanks they to the Yeah. Live, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, here, also a question that I, in retrospect, definitely should have made at some point. What is this race? Like, where are we? Hmm. There is an optional an optional rule to make a custom racetrack 
uh, with special rules for each leg of the race. I don't know if we want to dive into doing the Mec de France or <laughs> if we just want to have a more generic style of race. Um, that I could really, go anywhere underwater. I really into like space. the ideas in, in the Mech de France in the, uh, in the book. To be honest, so like I'm cool with with using. It's there. Up. Why not chunk into it, right? Yeah, okay. that seems good. Exactly. We'll so test it's... two things at once. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do good problem. science, right? <laughs> test as many things as possible all at you the same time. That's what we do. <laughs> so we are doing the mec de France for our own contracts. If we don't win, we're trapped with the corp forever. Those are big stakes. Big takes. Uh, hey everybody, who are the jerks that we're racing against? Every player come up with an opponent. Someone who you have a particular beef, give them a name and an adjective like dastardly. Uh, and elaborate on why you hate them so god darn much. And they may also be bands. I don't know. Did we decide that every <laughs> racer is also a band or just right vice versa? Mine is a band. It's okay, got to be a good. band. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I'm just trying to think of a name. Like, I'm thinking yeah. one of them should be like a really, really badass, like, like all girl punk band that in actuality is probably even cooler than us mm -hmm. significantly <laughs> significantly <laughs> like yeah what's a good name like you know like basically slater kinney with like a giant mech robot <laughs> that's the name of the band <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of the band, Slater Kinney, but with a giant mech. Chrome robot. Bikini Kill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. Uh, what's another uh, another uh, article of clothing and then a, a violent <laughs> adjective <laughs> or verb? <laughs> I I think we should just stick with Chrome Bikini Kill. That's <laughs> perfect to me. Uh, all girl punk band, and I think that their mech is like. It's also like one of these spidery mechs, but it's been made to be like all the decals and like extra pieces on it are just like very reminiscent of like Hello Kitty style anime, you know, like and they're just like super cute and like bright and colorful. <laughs> nice. But extremely dangerous. <laughs> like like when somebody puts Hello Kitty patterning on an AK-47. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. And you're yeah. like, that's even more menacing because of that. <laughs> nice. I have uh, an idea for a rival who are uh, a pop group that has been engineered to be the most like poppy, uh, like marketable group, but like <laughs> literally and figuratively. Yes. So they're they're all like they're a boy band who's been like uh, they're gene modded clones. Uh, <laughs> Who are all altered to be like, this is the hot one, this is the nerdy one, this is the sensitive one. Boom. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been grown in a vat <laughs> by the corp. They like tested uh, millions of people and like came up with like the theoretical hottest boy band. Exactly. Right. Like they've got Fine. they've got the archetypes Wait. down to a science. Uh, yes. All of their music is like done through memetics. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> They've they've researched the most pleasing chords and time signatures, uh, and it's just they're just a money maker, and they're they're in the race because they that's what they do. They make money, right? The the corp, anything they put and they're put in front of, uh, people love it, and yeah. I think Jinx at least thinks of them as sellouts, even though they've never had any agency in selling out. <laughs> right? Oh, they're like the uh, the band in. Um... What is that? Uh, the music video for Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger, where the bad uh, guys like kidnap them and overwrite their memories. Yeah, in yeah, Interstellar yeah. 555. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very into it. Does this boy band have a name? Um... Oh, we got to follow like and sync <laughs> right. type naming convention they're uh, even more in sync than in sync is <laughs> it it's boy band but it's b and then an ampersand 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. Boy Bam percent. Band, yeah. <laughs> there it is. That's, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. <laughs> Uh, so I think mine is gonna be, uh, there's like a, one of those, one of those, like, classical metal groups, like Apocalypto or whatever they're called, Apocalyptica, um, where they get a bunch of violinists and electric cellos together and stuff and, and, uh, go real hard. Uh, and I think, oh, great, what the heck is their name gonna be? It's gonna be... Scheherazade Concerto. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. It's an Austin Walker ass name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it yeah. really is. I I love that. And their what is their adjective? Right, we gotta come up with adjectives for all these things. I think I like their, their adjective in this case be... might be their genre. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I guess if I had to give them one, actually, I would say it's, like, precise. They probably have a mech that, like, its spider feet are, like, treble clefts with, like, perfect points at the bottom. Wow. Uh, that is that is just, like, this this beautiful articulated machine. Oh, that's so cool. Ugh. I hate them. <laughs> hate them. Their What's mech their moves have, like, a very precise time signature. Oh, yes. Oh, it's oh. like math rock times, right? It's yeah, all like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. progressive math rock uh, time signatures too. It like keeps changing. Oh, and it's super unsettling. You can feel it in the ground. <laughs> Shostakovich. Yeah. <laughs> ah. uh, what was their name again? It was Scheherazade Concerto. I'm... You should probably write these down somewhere. I'm sending them in our chat right here. Oh, perfect. Thank oh, you. Oh, good. I'm that spelling them all idea. wrong. Yeah. Spelling things it right works. is for chumps. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um Got it. Okay. So there's a band that is like they are the ones who are the the real unpleasant metal. Like that is the screaming, it is the crashing. There is no semblance of music to it. We have is... cannibal corpse racing with us. Yeah. Um and like their mech is on fire i don't <laughs> think that it's supposed to be i'm pretty sure they just like throw oil on it light it a flame before the match and it is very <laughs> common for bits of it to just fall off now not um, to get to warhammer 40k is their mech just possessed by a demon yes it is now. <laughs> Fell through a black hole, came out the other end. Yes. Oh, they, it's they the event it horizon. Mm. Yeah. Like, I don't know if that is actually true, but that is definitely the story, the story. they tell. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're, the, they're the evil ones. <laughs> if they get one adjective, it is evil. Um, mm. and... Lucas in the chat says, uh, the fire is unrelated to it being possessed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's possessed and it's on fire. It can do two things. It can do two things. Yeah. Um. And what is a uh, what's a good thrashy kind of name for them? I just want to call them like Satan Chuckers. Something <laughs> gutter slightly scum. Slightly too gutter scum. <laughs> gutter scum is good. That's gutter good. scum with two M's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. In case they need to work on one of the gutters in Maniac Mansion. Yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> I adore that. So we got Chrome Bikini Kill, Boy Bampersand, uh, <laughs> Charizard Concerto, and Gutter Scum. Gutter Scum! <laughs> That's the only way you're allowed to say it, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gutter Scum. That's in their contract. <laughs> Their contract defines how other people are allowed to say their name. It's a very good contract. <laughs> it's very hard to get out of these contracts, as we can tell. <laughs> their their offstage personas also were just like very clean cut. Like they're oh, yeah. they're just white picket fence family people. They're probably in their like mid fifties, mm -hmm. but their music is just like. <laughs> it's beautiful. All right. Should I describe how the race goes? Yeah, let's, let's do it. This is going to be a series of relatively quick vignettes in which we explain what part we're playing. 
uh, and resolve how well the robot handles this leg of the race. There are five legs of the race. Our goal is to be in the lead at the end of the fifth and final leg. So basically, first thing we'll decide is on this leg, who is who's piloting? It could be the driver. Doesn't have to be. We take turns. Uh, then everyone else describes what they are doing within uh, the robot, uh, within Chimera. Um, and then they can basically uh, either place one of, depending on what they say they're doing on your, your narration, you can either place one of your stress beads on a power-up track to improve our roll, uh, or you can place a bead on a broken component to do a repair or work on a repair, or you can gain a stress bead uh, if you were doing something else, if you were, you know, having a smoke or whatever. Um, and then we tally up bonuses. For every functioning component that has a creative or impactful use, we get plus one. Uh, for every bead in the power-up boxes, we get plus one and then discard those beads. And for every broken component, period, we lose one. We roll the die, and then we resolve the outcome based on this big, complicated table. And then well, the... big and complicated for us. It's yeah. no GURPS, but uh, <laughs> we're doing our best. It's a, very, it's a manageable table. See? Yeah, but did GURPS have giant robots? I mean, Probably. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm, sure they, I'm sure they have rules for it. Oh, yeah. Um, Does anyone know how to play GURPS? No, I think like, not even of the, the four of us, it. or period. <laughs> period. <laughs> <laughs> Ostensibly, Steve Jackson does. <laughs> Bold claim. <laughs> uh, oh, right. And if we are doing the uh, the Mech de France. <laughs> We are in leg one, the city. Narrow roads, lots of onlookers, make it hard for anyone to catch up. Minus two to the mech's roll, and we cannot use weapon components. I don't think any of our things count as a weapon, except maybe all of them? <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. yeah! I say now looking at, mm, scythe feet, mm, tentacle. Mm. I mean, guitar! <laughs> it's a weapon. <laughs> we know that the wings aren't because they don't do anything. <laughs> the wings are not a weapon. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> um, so who's our first who's our first pilot? Hmm. Not it. I'll do it if no one else will. I'm totally in. Let's do it. Sure. Okay. All right. All right. Godspeed. Quickly describe the state of the race as we're beginning. Okay. So the start of the race, I think that have we decided like the theater of the race? Oh yeah, Paris. we were gonna we were gonna talk about that, and then we didn't. I think because we uh, got sidetracked into describing our opponents. All right. I mean, if, All right. if we're doing the Mech de France, presumably we're starting in Paris, but it yeah. might be gritty, futuristic, falling apart Paris. I'm super into that. There are several Eiffel Towers. Yeah. That's the only way it's recognizable as Paris. You can see, like, four of them, like, off in the distance. Like, just, like, billowing clouds of black smoke coming out of each of them. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> um, the, yeah. The gears of industrial Paris are turning. And um, we... Uh, I want to say... Uh, as as the race starts in the first reg of, leg of the race, I think that uh, it, it it only makes sense that uh, that Chrome Bikini Kill like starts off like as soon as soon as you know you know race begins like giant thrusters uh, like come out of their back and just start like shooting like you know uh, uh, flames and they just shoot off and I think we're probably trying to trying to catch up with them maybe like riding their coattails essentially or you know you know, right, right about to catch up with them. Mm -hmm. Or are we eating their exhaust? We'll find oh, out. We'll find <laughs> out. A little bit of both, probably, <laughs> I'd say. All right. So what is everyone else doing who's not at the control console? I think I'm going to be 
Uh, I think I'm trying to wrangle all the different legs of the mech. Because uh, I think at the at the point where we're at like the ring where the legs join up with the body, there's like a room in there where you can see like the pistoning action of like the backs of the legs like coming in and moving. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's where the uh, the mouth of the Kraken tentacle is that we sort of like shovel junk food into in hopes of appeasing it. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I think, yeah, that's uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm I'm feeding the the Kraken tentacle to try and make sure that it gets through the race. Uh, I've got some Taco Bell, which is the only uh, fast food joint that has survived the franchise wars and i am just i've just got a literal war yeah (laughs) i just have uh dozens of crunch wraps supreme that i am just whizzing into it like frisbees because you know it's sort of like it's got one of those alien inner mouths where it like reaches out and tries to get you when you're too close to it Mm -hmm. um so i'm just tossing them in from farther away beautiful i love that uh, so that sounds to me like you are putting a bead on the power up track. That's what I'm doing. So I will. Right. Uh, I, I, that obviously is stressing me out. Yeah. And... Yeah, for sure. For sure. Power but... up. Mac. Oh. Power it up. We are Boom. powered up. And I, I don't. So it, so me since I'm narrating the scene, it essentially. I am the one who's currently driving the mech, right? Yeah, that is cool. your your current task. Love it. Um, I think I think I'm doing what I am certain is the most important uh, job, uh, oh. and that is I am at the kind of internal communication array, and I am putting on some tunes for mm-hmm. the lot of us. I am picking out the good shit. Um, which is to say that I'm absolutely playing my favorite gutter scum songs yeah. to give us to give us some power. I don't like them, but my God, that music is is power music. You can't deny um, it. That's and exhilarating. If, if we turn it on hard enough, maybe it will give us what we need to defeat gutter scum themselves. It's like biting <laughs> down on an electric fence. It'll wake you up in the morning. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I'm choosing to interpret that as powering up the robot by powering <laughs> up the robot's sure. occupants. Well, we we're probably partially powered by music, right? So having good tunes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing, Jinx? Uh, my first instinct was to say that Jinx is scouting the competition. Because, like, this first leg, we're just kind of getting going we don't need uh, a competent driver just like slamming in through the maneuverability of everything. Like it's going to be a little tricky for us, but I think we have a little bit of a cocky attitude that we're like, we're going to, we're going to pull this out. Mm -hmm. Um, So my first instinct was to say that like Jinx is in like the head of the, the Mm Krabator spider tour. (laughs) Um, What does the head look like? uh, Oh gosh. Well, we've got a big upper torso and the arms with the guitar strapped to it, right? That's just like, yes. like low key. I think constantly just shredding like oh, a couple yeah. of licks. Um, but the head, uh, since we've got this like monster <laughs> parts theme, uh, <laughs> it's probably like some kind of animal head. Yeah, uh, like a like a it's a dragon head. Obviously. Hell yeah. <laughs> Obviously. How did we uh, not realize that? <laughs> it just makes sense. It's not a component, right? So it doesn't like super breathe fire, but it looks yeah. cool as hell. It just looks it's... cool as hell. <laughs> yeah. And like th- from the like the 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 anime shot is that big sweeping perspective shift uh across the city and the racetrack that zooms in to the fisheye lens of the one of the eyes of the dragon head and Jinx is in there or like pulling switches and looking at all these different monitors that have on the huds up display that shows like who's in the front uh like what their velocities are um the the vitals of the other racers like what's their what are their cortisol <laughs> levels at um yeah. what's the adrenal spiking threshold for this team um 
and just making sure that like we have a sense of where everyone's at and kind of what's coming up ahead. Heck yeah. Cool. I love it. So now, uh, so are you going to be putting a stress point into power up then? Yeah. Does that count as powering up the robot? I'm, I'm willing to believe it, assuming you're like, yeah, like relaying this information. Yeah, like uh, we, I'm yelling back down, like we can't do this. So we've got to <laughs> keep yeah. in mind this, blah 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 blah, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I guess one, and one you're screaming thing. it over the gutter scum because, by God, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's how you keep your lungs in shape. Yeah. <laughs> um. So now I would roll a D8 plus three because we have three power up uh, beads, right? Uh, plus eight minus two, because, uh, if we are in the city on the, uh, the Mech de France, uh, we lose, we lose two. So plus three minus two. Uh, do we have functioning components that are having a creative or especially impactful use in this particular leg of the race? Bearing in mind we can't use weapons. But I think, uh. If if you wanna if you wanna throw some flavor on, uh, for being the pilot and talking about the cool components you're using, Adam, I think that is that is a good time for you to do that. Um. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. What? what oh my goodness! You know what I'm doing? What I doing? am I am proving crash metal wrong that these wings do have a purpose as we get up close Whoa. to uh, to. Um, I almost just called them Slater Kinney, but with a mech to Chrome. <laughs> yeah. um, and we are like starting to really eat their exhaust. I think that I like t- I, I abuse how stretchy the the spine is on this uh, robot from being completely broken, and really have it like kind of turn around, and that wing like does like the Batman thing and kind of comes over its face and is like blocking us from the fire from that exhaust. Wow! Yes, that's really good. All right, that is an additional plus one. Let's go. So, so that brings us to plus two, right? Plus two. All right, I'm I'm rolling. That's a two. That's not good, but plus the two is a four. Wait a minute. Is it different on your spreadsheet? Because I'm seeing a six. Re- I see a one. Wow. On my spreadsheet, it shows a two. I see a seven. <laughs> I have uh, misinterpreted how the random number function in (laughs) Google Sheets works. Let me throw this out. The audience saw you roll a six. Yes. Seems (laughs) right. Yeah, that's canon. Plus two is an eight, baby. Hell yeah. (laughs) Uh, So So we, we are trailing. We rolled an eight. That means into the fray. You can reach... The middle of the pack. Cool. Tell us all about how we get into the middle of the pack, baby. Uh, so I think that uh, we're probably like, we probably had the slowest start and uh, and Chrome Bikini Kill was right in front of us. Um, and I think that we just managed to like get close to them. And then we, we just kind of lean the mech over and it like with that bat wing just kind of like pushes them out of the way and slaps them a little bit. It's like, oh, you know, slaps their mech out of the way. Um, and then we just barely managed to kind of squeeze by them, you know. Nice. nice. All these narrow Paris streets. Yeah, exactly. The Barely region. designed We're for like a horse both, and cars. Yeah, the sides of both of our mechs are like like grinding into like brick buildings. Um, <laughs> and they're just like exploding basically next to us. <laughs> nice. Uh... They do this every year. They always rebuild the streets really narrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's part of the action. Every I mean, year they build them a little narrower. It's a tradition. Yeah. <laughs> And we managed to, to just get into the, the middle of the pack. Beautiful. Nice. Um, and now we can make a quick pit stop. In between each leg of the race, quick pit stop. Everyone say what they're doing. Do one of the following. Rest, tune up, repair, or ditch a component. Ooh. So before the next leg, what are we, uh, what are we doing? Um. I'm... I feel I feel like I really enjoy the pun inherent in tune up being like yes. let's record a little bit of driving music so that we are in an extra powerful position for this next uh for this next leg and that's what I'm doing. I like that idea. 
Um, I don't have any stress to remove, so I'm not going to relax. And we don't have any damaged parts, so I'm not going to ditch apart. So I think I'm right there with you. I'm going to I'm gonna power up the mech as well during this pit stop. Kind of yeah, feels I like think, that's what everyone's going to want to do. Me too. It? Yep. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. and, and we can we can throw a little flavor onto what exactly it is you're doing to uh, to tune it up. I think I'm going around to the other the other legs that are on the inside of the thing and just throwing big buckets of grease on them to uh, to keep them lubricated. Uh, it's 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 again pretty dangerous because there's an amount of like the leg like moving back into the area you're in, so you just sort of like get up near to it and just like huck a whole bucket of grease and sort of hope it nice. goes down the leg. Nice. In the interest of, like, resource management, is that a grease that our Kraken leg naturally secretes? It definitely is, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that you were on the same wavelength. That's exactly what it is. I love it. You just gotta it's wipe really it off after every race. <laughs> it sort of sweats it out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, I think what I'm doing to power the mech up is probably like the last thing I do before I leave the driver's seat is I like as we're getting close to the next the next you know the, the leading uh, mechs uh, I like uh, shift all of our power into the scythe legs so that we're like in a position to like sneak by someone or like slide our way into to a good situation nice There's... yeah exactly <laughs> Very good. I think the flying V needs to be powered up to be able to use it, even if it doesn't have any repair boxes ticked. So I think canonically, what I'm doing is charging that. Jinx is like uh, at the pit stop, like in the the like two. There's two comically oversized uh, <laughs> ports uh, oh, yeah. in, in the head or somewhere in the mech that Jinx has to like slide their arms into. Mm. Uh, and then like brings them around so is literally tuning up the flying V mm. uh, like yes. strumming and then turning the, the giant like house sized uh, keys <laughs> to get the pitches right uh, and then the last part of the ritual is to uh, feed a punch card which is the set list into the the hut the the main display the main console yes a punch <laughs> card <laughs> it's more like old janky sci-fi oh it's <laughs> so good that is very good is this 2400 <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah, that's on powering it up i love it all right those of us who tune things up do spend a stress bead to do that. Hell yes. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Zane already. Zane, you're on top of that. Thanks for being awesome. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, end of pit stop. Race leg two. Who's our next driver? Our next pilot might be the driver. I don't think it's a rule that you have to switch every round, but it should be. It should be. <laughs> what if... Ready? I have an idea for a rule. What if whoever is the pilot or the driver of a round decides who's the driver for the following round? Yeah, there you Ooh. go. Pass the spotlight. That's just good right? bandsmanship. Exactly. Pass the spotlight. <laughs> good bandsmanship. I like it. I like it so much that I think uh, you're going to be the driver for our next leg of the race. Hooray! <laughs> It's just like how the Beatles worked, you know? Every time someone finished a song, they would decide who got to do the next song. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I want to write yeah. another song about octopuses. <laughs> <laughs> you got to wait your turn, Ringo. <laughs> oh, no. Am I the Ringo of this group? <laughs> but Ringo hacked the system. He just chose himself for every next song. Oh, yeah. Too clever. Oh, and nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> Leg two of the Mechnophrons is the hills, where finally we can let loose bonuses and penalties from components are doubled with no broken components. That just means super bonuses, so mm -hmm. heck yeah. Um, so yeah, this is a leg that begins just sort of on the outskirts of Paris, and it, like, we're probably not even strictly out of Paris proper. Uh, we're in some, some distant arrondissement that nobody really cares about. 
Um, yeah, that's right. I remembered that word and I wanted to use it. Love it. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and then, uh, like, there's probably, yeah, okay, there's probably like a big sci fi energy wall around Paris Ooh, to keep yeah. the raiders out. Uh, <laughs> and so there's something of like a bottleneck there where anytime two, two mechs close enough, that's where they're kind of pumping elbows to uh, to get through because once they get through that that is when it is just smooth beautiful open wasteland uh from from here to the horizon uh, <laughs> keep the invisigoths out says lucas <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> they're like goths, but invisible they're the ghosts of all the goths <laughs> that's yeah. too good i love it I assume it's it's a mixture of uh, of Rome sacking goths and hot topic goths. Oh yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, they work together now. Um, <laughs> you have to pay they, Lucian they, Khan, like licensing fees for that. <laughs> they played a game of Visigoths versus Molgoths. They became friends. Now they are raiders attacking future Paris. Yeah, it just makes sense. It's uh, it's the oldest story. A tale as old as time. <laughs> <laughs> um. So that's sort of uh, that's sort of where we are. Is we're breaking out of the city uh, and into the hills. Uh, and since we've been like neck and neck with them the whole time, I think uh, really it is Chrome Bikini Kill and us getting there at about the same time. And it matters so much that we reach the uh, the energy fence opening, uh, the the Titan Gate before they do. That that's where I'm I'm shoving all of our energies. Nice. Mm. Neck and neck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we've already established that they're cooler than us, so. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Way cooler than us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I have an idea. So I think one of the things that's happening uh, because of that is that their mech, obviously, because it's so much cooler than ours, has uh, two guns. They are holding. Uh, the aforementioned Hello Kitty patterned assault rifle, one in each hand, and just going, just raking these giant Evangelion-sized bullets uh, all across us, and um, I am trying to help us get out of the way, uh, so I think I'm going to burn another stress to give us another power-up, and uh, what that looks like is I uh, I think I'm gonna do like the manual override of the legs because uh, I I I'm doing the equivalent of uh, when you're playing Mario Kart Double Dash and you're you're driving and then your gunner hits the punch button and it jerks the whole cart yes. over to the side yeah. uh, I'm doing that there's just a big lever for that in the in the mid belly of the mech so I run over and I I crank on the lever. Uh, and, and like half of the legs just instantly go rigid and the other half just shoot out as hard as they can. So that the whole thing just goes bonk over to the side, uh, to, to start dodging their bullets. Beautiful. That's, that's so cool. Uh, and I believe that has filled our power up bar as full as it can get. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So good for, good for me. Um, what are, what are you doing, Zane? <laughs> oh, Zane. Well, okay. So here's what happens. I think we get a nice shot of like Crash Metal first coming into like the cockpit, getting ready, like you know, uh, uh, what whatever it is that she does to to get ready to start flying flying the uh, the mech. And Zane is like, "Oh, good, you're here." And he like jumps out of the chair and just like rockets out of the room. And you're like, "Where the hell?" Is um and we get like a bunch of shots of him just like sprinting through hallways and then like between bulkheads and like through hallways again um just as fast as he can and then i think we the camera cuts to jinx uh in the room like tuning up the the flying v and we see like above from behind jinx like above on a balcony um Zane runs out and like jumps off the balcony and there's a giant lever that's like a story tall and he like jumps onto it and is like pulling it down like with his whole body weight and as he does on the outside of the mech 
is like the arm is like strumming the chord for the flying <laughs> bee. <laughs> um, and I'm just trying to like, you know, push, <laughs> push uh, Chrome Bikini Kill away from us. <laughs> Hell yeah! The sonic wave. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we're get, um, we're getting a plus one for that, baby. Oh, cool. So so do I still get to spend the uh, this dress point, uh, even though this this track is full here? Um, I don't... or does that get factored in at the end? Yeah, I think our power up track maxes out at five. Part. So, it, like, what it, what it factors in is you have you have confirmed that the flying V is in use. All right. Mm. Oh, Hell okay. Yeah. That's fair. Do I still spend my stress point? I think you no. should probably get a stress point because you're doing you're you're in the something else category of uh, doing something that's not repairing or powering up. Oh, yeah, you know you're right. That's just a relaxing dive onto that's... a lever for you. <laughs> this this is my zen. <laughs> uh, in that case. Uh, I think <laughs> I think Jinx like gets onto the the section that controls the tentacle. Uh, like there's maybe like a, a nerve center. You mm-hmm. just kind of like pull and yank on different like <laughs> tendons and stuff. Amazing. <laughs> and just of, see what happens. Gets a spasm in different directions. <laughs> uh, and is trying to like bat away the giant bullets <laughs> with the tentacle <laughs> that are coming at us. Nice. Nice. Because it can grow back. Right. Which would be stressful for other people, but for, for Jinx, Jinx is just playing out like a little solo here. It's just like, oh yeah, let me I've been I've been working on a little something, <laughs> Chrome Bikini Kill. You might not have heard of it yet. That's because we haven't played it right now. But you're about to get front row seats, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, wiggly, it's wiggly, too wiggly, good. Wiggly, wiggly. <laughs> All right. Um. Boy, we got a lot going on. For this we role, do. not only am I getting okay, okay, this this may underscore a, a a bit of let's call it mathematical hodgepodge that I hadn't considered <laughs> in advance. We got like a but, plus thirty to our role. Yeah, if, right. if indeed bonuses from components are doubled, and we are confirmed to be using the flying V and the space crack and tentacle. And we had special attention paid to the energy scythe feed. It really does just make sense that we're using that. That's six. Yeah. Uh, seven, eight, A casual nine, plus six. Ten, uh, eleven. We're at plus eleven total. <laughs> <laughs> so we either get uh, the eleven, the twelve result, or the thirteen plus, right? Yeah. Let's. Uh... <laughs> nice. Good for us. <laughs> Eighteen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Love to roll an eighteen on your D eight. <laughs> Love to roll an eighteen on a D eight. Good work, team. Game balance doesn't matter if you're having fun. <laughs> Hell yeah, you're absolutely right. Oh, so you know, I just I do want to pause. And last night, and de- last night, I was was talking to Alex about the game before we mm-hmm. publish it, and he distinctly mm-hmm. said to me, "You know, I think these results are too punitive." <laughs> Maybe I think they uh, need to be they need to be uh nicer and we need to be able to get higher numbers cuz we used to we used to cap out uh how many bonuses you could get and I was like what if we just took that limiter off <laughs> See how it runs Oh, I love it. And here we are. Here, here we, we are. are. Right. Uh <sighs> having having gotten greater than a 13, mine and gone, moved in the lead and gain a component because we rip it off one of our opponents. So how does this, how does this work? It's it's um, got to be the the Hello Kitty machine gun. Oh right? God, it is the Hello yep. Kitty machine guns. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's seize it with the tentacle, and now the tentacle has a machine. Now, gun. now the tentacle has a machine gun. Oh oh oh! Oh that no! Give us a plus two, I think. <laughs> oh boy! Hello Kitty machine gun, it is ours. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I uh, I pushed the uh, the bot a little bit closer, like a little bit closer than is wise, right at this perfect strum moment, and everybody on the uh, uh, on the the the, the what are they called again? Chrome Bikini Kill. Everybody on Chrome Bikini Kill is sort of thrown backwards, giving us that opening for the tentacle to slurp out. I don't know if we even want it to happen, but it happened. No, that's this is it's autonomous for it's sure. Of, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We had no control over it. <laughs> it's one of those tentacles that just autonomously grabs guns. It's really dangerous. <laughs> Reaches out, snatches it, curls up around it, and like shoves its little tentacular tip into the trigger guard and starts firing it wildly. Uh, <laughs> or maybe uh, that's exactly what Jinx tried to do. I feel like they have such good control over this thing, probably. It's true. Uh, and, that, and that is the moment when a couple of our spider legs sprawling down, knocking us ahead. Uh, like bolstered by the power of the gun shooting backwards to get us through that gate uh, as we're taking out the chrome kneecaps of chrome bikini kill uh, and then um. running off into the hills uh, just beautifully, wonderfully, no longer in the middle of the pack, but in the lead. So cool. So cool. Too cool. Dangerously cool. Oh, yeah. Um, and now we get to make another pit stop. Well, we don't have anything. We don't have uh, anything to repair. We don't have anything broken. We're doing I thought we were going to break so much stuff. I thought we were going to break Ooh. things, and we super did break things. Well, it's because we used the six instead of the one for that first roll. Yeah. Fair. That's true. That's true. You're right. We got a, we got really good momentum at the start, and now that's we might be able to ride this good luck we, us we might have overpowered momentum um anyway i think for for my contribution to uh the tuning up process uh i am going to uh power up this robot and i think what i like the the form that my power up takes as we are doing our pit stop is trying to teach the tentacle how to reload <laughs> like there Obviously. i am with like i don't know a sack of hamburgers and it's like whenever the tentacle reaches close to the next clip the next giant clip that's bigger than i am i'm like yep you got it right and i hawk the burger into one of its horrible mouths and obviously as previously established those are taco bell mexi burgers yes <laughs> I, po I apologize for briefly forgetting about our rich fiction. <laughs> Deep no, no. War. You're just making it better. <laughs> Let's think. What am I doing to, to power up this mech? I'm probably... So I think that what I'm doing is I'm going to... Unbeknownst to everyone, because I have not told you all about this, the issue Ooh. with the, the spine on the mech, and that it's wrapped in a giant rubber band but mm -hmm. i am like going to service the rubber band on the spine and like retighten it because we put it under so much stress i think oh yeah yeah that's good so i like slip away and, and go do that hmm uh i think because we said that we run on these like nuclear power cores i think that last leg really took it out of the mech uh even if we took the lead um so i think we're i'm like i'm popping a few of these out uh because i'm used to it like we've got spare reactors but like a few of them just will get burned out <laughs> in the process uh and uh, i've taken them and while we're like tossing burgers at the tentacle i like toss a couple of the like burned out power cores with these you know big heavy gloves that protect me from the searing radiation um, <laughs> yeah. in there so that we were loading like depleted uranium shells <laughs> oh my god <laughs> into the hello kitty machine gun oh my god that's beautiful so that's very good I love it. yeah and I think that I am going to be taking a nap. 
<laughs> I have uh, I have loaded up on uh, on uh, what do I want to say? Uh, maybe like the the Taco Bell branded uh, ice cream cake, uh, which has just a nice refried beans and cheese layer in the middle of it. And I'm just, I have just been going to town on that. And then I go into a food coma for like 10 (laughs) solid minutes. There's just a, there's a a hammock nearby that I just collapse into. uh, And then it breaks and falls onto the ground. And I don't notice and just keep being asleep. (laughs) The hammock's definitely strung up between spider legs, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you were to sleep in it, it will like stretch and move horribly <laughs> while the mech is running. <laughs> That's why it was so frayed. Refried bean fudgy the whale. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Gross. <laughs> Have to continue the tradition of food crimes. <laughs> oh boy. Um I believe that for this upcoming leg of the race. It is going to be our our actual driver. It's going to be Jinx. Okay. Um, and we are, according to the Mec de France, uh, at the cross-country section. Uh, this part of the race lasts several days. We will make two pit stops Ooh. this round. Which, boy, we may run out of things to do on our pit stops. We'll find <laughs> yeah, out. Wow. Maybe we, so roll like... super bad. Maybe we should do nothing to help. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just see what happens. <laughs> um, but yeah, set a, set the stage. Yeah, so we're at the cross country. We've kind of gotten out of that that dome. Uh, and uh, uh, if it's it's got to be like open open countryside um, and rough terrain. Um, I think it's a little less interesting if, uh, it's all like post-apocalyptic burned out landscape and more interesting if the area outside of the city has been just like super terraformed to make up for, um, for the like deforestation and everything that's happened over the years. And there's like a, a revitalization project that's been going on. Oh, uh, but we have to race through it. So like, and it's, you know, oh, maybe no. put, a little, put, a little, put a little dystopia on that sucker. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And say that like someone's, dro- they, the corpse have dropped like uh, uh terraforming bombs in the countryside that uh, just like cause massive foliage growth. So it's like a, a, a hyper jungle <laughs> that, uh, on the, like the mountainsides and, and rolling hills. Um, so there's all of this flora that is not a native to France, <laughs> but uh, or, or since it's France, can we be can we be going through the Champagne region and yeah. use like a hyper vineyard? <laughs> yeah, the the grapes are all like roided up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the size of a football. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. that's what it is. Instead, it's not like the <laughs> it's terraforming, but it's it's like industrial terraforming so there's these huge terraces of car sized grapes um, yes. and stuff uh, like big vats uh, and things like that um, and they've got they've got big robots that are uh, with their bare feet stomping on the grapes yeah of in course giant silos <laughs> of course <laughs> uh, and slaloming hills and whatnot um, so we're we're out there uh, in this this beautiful uh, countryside, <laughs> uh, and I think so. Chrome Bikini Kill has been like left in the dust. They're probably trailing around us. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Boy Band has been keeping pretty good pace this whole time uh, overall, uh, but I think at this point, uh, Sherzad Concerto has been like taking the lead and they're i think the ones that are like at the top of the pack right now uh trailed by gutter scum who is like we're gonna get you (laughs) we're gonna murder the hell out of you when we get (laughs) the top of the the pack uh 
I'm going to say that Zane gets a little bit too comfortable. Uh, I'm feeling really confident in how far ahead in the lead we are. And while I'm in the spine room with my giant rubber band, I think I maybe doze off and take a little nap. I'm going to get my stress back. All Amazing. Right. 50% of the team currently asleep. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's like, uh, you, can all, you can all take a nap. I know this countryside like the back of my hand. It's all smooth sailing, baby. <laughs> I, honestly, it makes sense. I also stay asleep. 50% of the team is asleep. Well, I am, I am not a chump. I am not going to let down Jinx. But because I am confident in Jinx, because they taught me everything I know, and I know they can handle this, I am having a smoke. <laughs> but I'm not doing it asleep. You're not asleep. No. Just a casual two-day smoke. Just having a casual yeah. two-day smoke. Where, like, I'm definitely on top of the head of the robot. I am outside on it's the in surface of control. <laughs> it's I'm a on nice the surface of Chimera. I have, like belted myself in because it is a non-smoking robot <laughs> <laughs> and so this is what i have to do <gasps> there are gigantic crepe vines just like pelting you <laughs> yeah absolutely like every so often i try to reach out and grab a giant grape in the hopes that maybe it's champagne already i don't know right. how this works yeah. maybe it is i don't know I don't know how terraformed <laughs> super greats work. Maybe they're free wine for our convenience. That does I, sound really sounds good. Very good. Yeah. Imagine a mm. giant grape that's already wine. Ooh. Damn. Why the do we get into game design and not if, genetic yeah. tampering? You know, if all the TTRPG <laughs> designers in the world just drop TTRPGs and band together to invent this grape, we might be able to do it. Yes. <sighs> So basically, you're on your own, Jinx. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I think that's maybe what Jinx wants, too, is like, I can't focus when everyone's running around on the background. Like, this is open country. We've, mm. we've got the lead. I'm going to take us home through the, like, I'm going to carry. It's the friggin, uh, 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 what is that? Uh, not Layla. Um. Oh, the Almond Brothers band song. That's just like um, a 15 minute guitar solo. <laughs> it was in Guitar Hero. Uh, I don't remember what it was though. It's a it's a, it's a name. Jessica. Jessica. Mm. <laughs> like it's like <laughs> I'm just gonna go through this riff and. <laughs> You all go do what you're going to do. I work better alone here. That's uh, great. Big go for confidence vibe. <laughs> uh, so mechanically, uh, we've got the plus two from the power up. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the only system I'm using is the flying V, which is just like, yeah, while I'm here, oh, yeah. I'm going to practice some licks. <laughs> while, yeah, while, yeah. while we're going, I'm going to keep... I will work that thing out. Like I, I came up with a good, a good riff. I think when I was batting those bullets away. Let me see how it actually sounds on the gear. <laughs> uh, and that's like boosting morale, uh, which I guess leaves us with a plus three total. Oh, plus right. three. All right, let's see what happens. Seven. 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 Uh, so we're in the lead. Ten. <laughs> oh, we're struggling. <laughs> we're struggling. Okay, finally something bad happens. Yeah. Woo. Uh, struggling. We break a component, but stay in the lead. What? Ha what happened? Uh, I think while we we're just crambling along. You know, scrambling and scrumbling <laughs> through wine country. Um, like, uh, gutter scum uh, smashes through one of the, uh, like, wine silos that just 
<laughs> throws our whole trajectory off, uh, nice. and uh, we break a string on the flying V. <laughs> <gasps> oh, that's the Not worst the possible bee. result. No. What are we so doing? Shredding it, and I'm like, I can't get it out of the way fast enough. Mm. Oh, it was so mellow. We're doomed. We can't. We can't win without our flying V. That's it. Uh, right, luckily, that's we do get to make are. two pit stops and have like a million stress to spend <laughs> on fixing it. <laughs> Ooh, but. great! I mean, I'm spending my both of my pit stops fixing the flying V for sure. That's fair. Yep. This, that's that's this, very reasonable. Yeah, this this instrument's important to me. So I think that uh you know what? I'm trying to think if I would if I was asleep. No, I probably spend my first pit stop. I rush to the flying V. I'm like, no, my baby, and just start <laughs> start like, you know, getting a new string and, and trying to put it on. Uh, I and think... this this string must be like a steel cable, like a foot oh, thick, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like a suspension <laughs> bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it snaps, it just <laughs> yeah. It like definitely when it snapped, it like hit a tree, and the tree like caught fire and just went flying. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I yeah, no, I think I'm gonna spend both of my pit stops trying to fix this flying bee. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue doing that. You are the engineer. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. So I'd take away two of my stress and put them on the flying V repair track. Nice. I think hmm. I'll spend one to power up for my first one. Uh, I think I am. Uh, I'm gonna go check on Old Faithful. Are usually working. Uh, but occasionally not working nuclear reactor. And uh, and I think I spend some time, like, we don't know how to repair it or, or do anything helpful to it, but I, like, give it a new coat of paint, just, like, in the hopes <laughs> that that'll, like, contain the radiation a little better or, like, something. Uh, and I think we're always, like, painting it different colors, uh, so now it is bright orange. Powerful. Powerful. I think I feel personally responsible for breaking the string. <laughs> uh, so I'll spend one of my pit stops ticking that repair box uh, and like, oh, Zane, baby, I didn't, I didn't mean for it to happen this way. You know, I was just... <laughs> It came out of nowhere. I was I was shredding the road with hot licks, and and the next thing I know, there was a tidal wave, a tidal wave of champagne, baby. It just came out of nowhere. Drinks. <laughs> <laughs> so, you always do this. <laughs> I'm not like a wrench, and I'm trying to get the tuning fork tuned up, the, the tuning pick. I'm like, ah, all right, all right. You just you know, go go down to the bridge and start. Start stringing the new string. I'm going to start tuning it up. We'll get this fixed in no time. <laughs> Running off and grabbing the, <laughs> the materials. <laughs> right. um, and then after that, I think Jinx like rests. Because <laughs> oh, I was yeah. down to two stress beads. Uh, oh, yeah. And I think that rest is not even like a nap. It's just like a... Because Jinx is so shaken from breaking the device. Like... No, they know how much this whole thing means to Zane, uh, and this race has everything on the line. And it's like a, like a gritty Netflix moment where mm. they're in like a dark, the dark room of like the the quarters with the mirror in front of them and like a flickering halogen bulb. So they're like leaning over a sink, staring into the mirror, splashing yes. water on their face. Like you gotta, you gotta get it together. <laughs> You can't, you can't burn out here, baby. There's always one more set, one more song, one more oh. show. It's the encore. You got to get out there. You got to give it your all, baby. Yep. Yep. I love it. That's good. I That's very you good. You call yourself baby. That's so good. <laughs> oh. 
All right. I guess I'm going to spend uh, one of my pit stop units doing a little tuning up, doing a little uh, uh, repair on this here on this here giant robot. What is the best way to uh, to make it even more impressive? <laughs> um I think that what I you know what? I think that I am I am at I like I am there while y'all are repairing the flying V. I am 100%. I do not I don't touch a guitar. I am a vocalist. <laughs> I do not play. I do not repair. I don't understand how this thing works. But I do. I did recognize uh, in that whole kerfluffle from my advanced view from up on top of the robot that we did not have flame decals on the giant guitar somehow. I assumed sure. we did. I like, but no, we didn't. Somehow and now you we have forgot. to put them on without touching it. Oh, this is an extra well. challenge. <laughs> so, like, after after Sidewinder has uh, finished painting the uh, the nuclear reactor, I just snag uh, a little bit of that extra orange paint, and I'm like, "Gang, I'm painting on some flame decals, and it's gonna make it better. <laughs> it's gonna make it better." Yes, I assure you. Um, and it does because that's how this fiction works this rich fiction yeah oh sure. absolutely and i am going to use my the other part of my pit stop having exhausted myself by interfacing with the guitar and paint to go back on top of the robot's head and have another cigarette <laughs> to really uh just just bring it just bring me home uh, I think I am gonna, for my second one, uh, be be spending a stress to power us up. Uh, I think I have been uh, been working together with the Kraken Tentacle to uh, to try and get it to grab a grape as we're going by, so that it can like crush the grape and and drink it and get drunk because uh, they are in fact already full of wine. Or because we are in the Champagne region, it's actually Champagne, not sparkling wine. Pre-Champagne, pre-bubbly, uh, and the the tentacle is drunk now. And it does not share it with us. I was really hoping that we would be able to like harvest that somehow, but yeah. it is mostly just wasted as it sloshes onto the ground. I love it. God, I want a giant orb of wine, though. Like, <laughs> right. is that just me who's really into this now? <laughs> sounds so good. <laughs> oh, the orbness really just gives it another level of appeal. Right, it makes it seem so much more refreshing. Yeah. Mm. Uh, who's our pilot for leg four? Uh, I think it's got to be uh, Sidewander. Yeah, let's hit it. Sidewinder, be aware that we're in the mountains. Every accident costs more. If you roll under a 10, we break an additional component. Ooh, exciting. I think then this has to be this has to be the battle in the mountains. Uh, I think the way this looks is there is a like a, a protracted running three-way duel between us and um and I think uh yeah, Scheherazade Concerto has is is staying out of this one with their their fragile speedy mech, uh, so it's us and Boy Band and Gutter Scum just really going at it. Uh, Gutter Scum has got like this horrible demon mouth that is like belching this greasy black flame at us in these like big sticky orbs, and uh, Boy Band has got um, what would a Boy Band have for a weapon? Uh, um, hmm. Flame I feel katana? like maybe flame katana made of flame, like uh, a switchblade comb. There we Ooh. go. Ooh. Yeah, okay, it's definitely a switchblade comb. Uh, switchblade comb. Their, their mech has a, a pompadour, obviously. They've got just a little bit of, of 50s uh, greaser look going on on that mech. And uh, 
So they are they are deftly darting in and taking slashes at us. Yeah, that's canon now. Uh, so we we are just constantly being bombarded by the one and ambushed by the other, uh, trying to fight them off with our flailing tentacle wielding a gun. <laughs> and our, oh yeah. Oh man, our flailing drunk tentacle wielding a gun. <laughs> nah, that's fantastic. That's what's up. So, I'm trying to... Uh, Jinx, do you want to continue to uh, pilot that that Kraken tentacle? Uh, I can, if you have a fun idea. Um, I, w- <laughs> I <laughs> was thinking that like it, maybe if one of us pilots the Kraken tentacle and one of us goes into the gun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, then, then we're in sync. Exactly. exactly. You go into the gun. That's yeah. It actually might make beautiful. more sense for you to go into the gun because that's more like lead guitarist thing to do. I think uh, it's true. So maybe I go to this uh, this you know neuro controller for the Kraken tentacle and start wiggling it around, and you like go into the gun. Yeah, because we finally decided. Don't let it just hold down the trigger constantly. That's not really. <laughs> it's not really the play. One of us has to control this thing. Yeah. Yeah. The, the gun has later. a cockpit, which has a smaller gun inside of it, which is how you control it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, it's like uh, oh, what's that arcade game? Time, like a time, time practice cabinet, cabinet, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have the yeah, light yeah. gun inside of it that you have to like aim and click with. <laughs> Inside the giant mech gun. <laughs> this rules. I love yeah. that. I love that. Wait, how does the aiming work? Does it make the barrel like rotate just a little bit? Uh, aiming works very well, is your answer. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> how does aiming work? Yes, it does. It does work. Uh, it does, yeah. So we both get to add power up, right? It sounds like. Yeah, sounds yeah. like it. All right. I love it. Take my stress out. That leaves uh, Crash Metal with precious little that she needs to do. (laughs) With the power up uh, bar filled, I believe. Oh, wait, or is there one more room for power up? Well, hell. I wasn't paying attention, but I'm willing to power up some more. Um, So, okay, so one of you is running a tentacle, one of you is running a gun oh yeah <sighs> it only makes sense it That's only makes sense gun runners i guess i'm gonna have to uh zip on down to the energy scythe feet because i'm not gonna control the flying v and as we established <laughs> the bat wings do not do anything <laughs> so uh i guess like what i will consider to be my primary job at present is to make sure that the the other seven non kraken tentacular legs know that what they need to do is not get in the way. Mm-hmm. So we're doing a lot of running with like seven of our legs all on one side. <laughs> we're kind of, we're doing a sideways tippy toe to uh, get that Kraken tentacle up and into a, mo- a more active position. Like the whole mech is like tipped to the side. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Very good. That's very yeah, good. very good. All right. Uh, so, what did we say in terms of components that are helping? Then uh, it sounds like the the feet, the tentacle, are both helping, and the gun. So that's another plus three. Uh huh. Three plus five sure is eight. <laughs> sure is eight on our D eight. Mm, delicious. Well, uh, let's give that a roll. And as as is tradition, I will roll the die, and you tell me what it says. <laughs> Boom. That's a five. Well, it was a six on my screen. Damn it. So that's only a 13, the highest the, possible result. The highest possible only. roll. Amazing. Uh, uh, yeah, you stay in the lead and keep a bead on the power up track. A powerful lead. That's amazing. So what does that look like? 
we're in this battle we are uh, we're going back and forth we're fighting the void band we're fighting uh gutter scum and i think uh yeah the reason we're staying powered up is because we managed to finally uh close the distance with gutter scum who have just been bombarding us from afar with their demonic artillery and uh we get up to them and i think we uh what do we do we don't rip a part off them but we get one of our mechs hands up and we just like hit it with a palm up under the mouth of their demon gun so it like clanks its jaw shut Ooh. and then when it tries to shoot it like blows up its own demon head uh there's just like horrible flames and the sounds of screaming souls pouring out of it you know they're still in the race obviously uh they can function without a head but they they are demoralized and we all exchange high fives yeah so cool so Majestic. good so cool All right. Last pit stop, y'all. And I know exactly what I am doing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? We haven't, since we've been doing so well, we haven't really had a cause to use uh, our limit breaks, but I am going to break my limit now. Hell yeah. Uh, nice. And by spending all of my stress, I get to uh, create a new sponsored component. Yeah. Uh, Ooh. And, like, we, we get to where the pit stop is held, uh, and there's, like, a crate waiting for us. Ooh. Uh, and, I'm like, ha-ha! <laughs> Open that one up, boys! <laughs> and as you, you know, I don't, I guess use the mech to open it up. It's a giant crate. Uh, and what it is, is a tremendous pair of shoulder mounted speakers yeah <laughs> yes yes that we can plug straight into the flying v oh that's so good and as we are crossing the finish line we will be blasting have we named any one of our songs we have um, not our new hit single our new hit single Jazz age. I don't know. <laughs> that, that, I don't listen I... to metal or music. I'm pretty sure most. I don't listen to great metal or music. Theme. It's definitely a song. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's that's it. That's what it is. All right, we're blasting our hit single. I don't listen to metal or music from our uh, our upcoming. Uh, yeah, what 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 I know is going to be our final studio album. Uh, Chimera Forever. Forever is also uh, F dot O dot R dot. Don't know what it stands for. Mm -hmm. Same as Forever GM. Yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. The legendary cultural icon of uh, 3055 <laughs> when this takes place. And uh, yeah, that's that's my uh, that's my pit stop. Nice. Oh, and they are Sony. Just. <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, they that's are so Sony, cool. though. Like, this clearly yeah, okay. say, yeah. That's, you know, it's the, yeah. it's the price you pay. <laughs> um, you know, normally I think I'd want to rest up during this pit stop, but since we're going into the last leg of the race, I'm powering up, baby. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I am going to, how am I going to power us up? I think that, well, now that the flying V has been restrung, I think I'm probably going through that same tuning ritual to get it powered up for the next round that uh, that that Jinx had done in our first pit stop. Hell yeah. I, think, uh, I think I'm going to also power up. I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna be sharpening the uh, the energy scythe feet, uh, which you have to do with like a, a very strong electromagnet that like repels the ions that they're putting out, and so you just sort of have to like walk under them, holding it up at a, at the right angle. 
so they are just gleaming uh, even brighter than before. I think they're like sort of a yellow green color of energy, mm-hmm. and uh, and now when we are when we are uh, gliding across, we are no longer leaving like big, deep, thick furrows. They're like these incredibly, you know, almost monomolecular, uh, narrow yeah. lines that we're slicing. Nice. Nice. Uh, it doesn't really matter as much because the power bar doesn't change. Uh, but I'm going to use my limit break. Uh <laughs> Yeah. You oh, fill yeah. up the rest of our power track. <laughs> nice. Uh, okay. And I think this, so we've said that like the big thing for this mech is that it's got really terrible heat sinks. Um, mm. and there's these nuclear cores, right? So I think this whole time, Jinx has been quietly like maintaining the, the heat sink uh, systems and everything and like regulating uh, the power cores and ejecting those cores and putting them in the gun was like uh, a harebrained attempt at <laughs> keeping everything running uh, so and they're cool. like I, we don't have time for this we got to win or it's nothing so it's it's very easy for them to power it up they just stop maintaining everything <laughs> like <laughs> they shut down all of the extra janky uh uh-huh. maintenance systems uh and just let it run at full throttle so we're going to come in uh, to the finish line, one way or another, just glowing white hot. <laughs> oh my god, yes. I love that. <laughs> uh, oh, for my downtime sure action, I guess I rest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're all gonna just be baked, like, in an oven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> all of our Taco Bell burritos will turn into chimichangas. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Also, I think Laura, you you still have a, a downtime action oh. technically, since you sort of limit broke at any time. Oh yeah, I'm gonna brag about how great these speakers are, and how I got such a good deal. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and that definitely counts as resting. It's the most restful uh, thing there deal. is. Bragging, I love it. It gives <laughs> me life. So who's our uh, who's our pilot for the final leg of the race? That's well, for you to decide, isn't it? Oh yeah, right. Oh, good question. Oh, so much responsibility. I know, right? I think it's got to be Jinx, though. You had that super cool plan mm-hmm. uh, with the heat sinks, and you are you are the driver. Okay, that's true. Which means that now that I don't have to worry about managing all of the heat, then I can just focus on driving. <laughs> which makes a lot of sense so we're like yeah. jamming out on the flying v and we're doing the like skating yep. bobbing and weaving with the scythe feet that are already pumped up uh i think we decide to like lean into the mobility of the wings like we hunker down kind of forward like a yep. like a speed skater does with the hands behind the back except we've got the guitar in the front so it's not like that at all uh, <laughs> we spread the bat wings out and we use that to kind of carry the momentum. Uh, and there's got to be like heat and flame venting off of the wings. Yo. So like leaving, we're carving this burning uh, trail uh, like so many blue sparks <laughs> as we're mm. just sl- slicing through everything. Uh, in the final stretch here, it's back to the city, right? So it's it's already been shredded up from, from our initial... Uh, pass. I think we see like the far end of the track where we started, um, but this section of the city I think has been anticipating us. So there's defensive shields over every <laughs> hab complex that's down here. <laughs> like blast shields have come down over the buildings. Um, there's uh, like crisis response teams standing by, <laughs> sirens blaring, along with like air horns and everything. So there's people celebrating in hazmat suits uh, yes. next to actual first responders <laughs> like oh, yeah. well, things go yeah. badly <laughs> we're here uh, uh, and the we're... hazmat suits are like painted in different team colors right exactly <laughs> with the badges um and i think it's just real just chaos uh around us and behind us we're like everyone is slamming into everybody else uh 
it's a it's a real mech free for all. That's beautiful. So I don't know about everybody else, but I am taking this opportunity to get on the mic and I am singing us home. Yes. I am blasting out as loud as I can through uh, the big shoulder mounted speakers. Like I'm probably like right behind you, Jenks. I assume we have yeah, sure. our uh, our gear for that in the same room as our control console and I am I am uh I'm singing. I'm singing, baby. That, Listen to us it. as we win. Yeah. Uh, I think that there's a point where everybody maybe looks around in the heat of all this chaos and is like, wait, where the hell did Zane go? And then we get a nice shot of the gigantic head of this robot, and you can see a tiny little speck. And as we zoom in on that speck, that is like a sunroof. And Jinx is like waist from the waist. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Zane from the waist up is just like out the sunroof with his bass guitar playing a song <laughs> to whatever you're singing. That's so good. You're not. Are you hooked up to anything, or is it like completely inaudible to anyone? Yeah, probably pretty, probably completely inaudible. I well, can like hear that's... you in the ears of my heart. Is... Yeah, I'm just jamming along. I sing better knowing you're doing it. It's the life of the bass player where you're like, I'm doing so much work and no one can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that hurts. Uh, and I think I will be I will be drumming it in as well. Uh, I think there's a there's a drum set that is set up in my in my little zone in the middle. Uh, and I'm I'm uh I think for once I'm not drumming as fast as I can. I am I am drumming uh, inspired by the movements of our legs. So I've got an equal number of drums set up to how many legs there are. And like whenever one comes up, I hit that drum. But like there are eight legs, so I'm just doing it like. <laughs> oh it's still God. it's basically indistinguishable from my regular playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it, it has a different inspiration. That's and I mean. think that's uh, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna get me some stress back. Sure, <laughs> very calming for the end of our run. Yeah. All right, roll that bone. Here we go, baby. That is a five. Plus five for the power up. Uh, I mean we that's. We know we're using the mounted speakers, right? We're definitely using the mounted speakers. That gets us to 11. That leaves us at in the lead. That leaves us at in the lead. At le in yeah. the lead. At the end of the fifth leg. <laughs> means we win. Oh, Jinx, how, hey. does, how does this look? Uh, so I think everyone on the in the band and on the, the team is working together. Yeah. We're pouring our hearts out into not only our piloting, but our performance. So we're like... Yes the the sequence of the like the different panels popping up as we're playing our instruments in our various <laughs> positions uh so cool. the uh other mechs have kind of like slammed into each other there's like smoldering wreckage of someone like maybe boy band has just is smoking in a crater somewhere <laughs> <laughs> gutter scum and sherzad concerto are like clawing over each other uh, Chrome Bikini Kill is like locked side by side with us and is doing the the racer like mm -hmm. <laughs> face off moment. Uh, and uh, I think at the last second, uh, uh, I, uh, Jinx just punches it, just like <laughs> <laughs> flicks a uh, like pulls a lever that just says like the switch <laughs> or like the juice <laughs> uh and the the energy scythe feet uh like splay outward uh as the wings f fly up uh mm -hmm. and we get that extra little speed boost and foom slide forward and I think the last shot is us crossing the finish line, like breaking the mile long ticker tape <laughs> <laughs> as the, the mech is on its, its crab knees, just oh my God. out the last power cord on the yeah. flying V. Yeah. 
uh, that echoes out through the speakers, and then the speakers explode. <laughs> 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 and the kraken would be the kraken tentacle would be throwing up the horns if it had more than one tentacle. It's just going like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's throwing up one tentacle, but we all <laughs> yeah. know in our hearts it's a horn. Yeah. Oh my god. <sighs> Beautiful ending. That was beautiful. That was that good. Was very fun. And, okay, uh, I don't think we have any. We don't have any denouement or epilogue or anything. That's it. Uh, it's take a moment to celebrate and talk about what our next steps are. Oh, there we go. There it is. So yeah, what like what is next for Chimera? I mean, <sighs> I would imagine winning this race gained us so much renown. Now we're like. We can go off on our own and like just start releasing music, and people will buy it because we're like right. that crazy fucking rockers that almost destroyed the earth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel like there's a there's a little scene where uh, we we uh, we take back the the kraken tentacle to its home planet and like re-release it into the ocean and we see like the big primary body that it came off comes up and they're sort of like nuzzling at each other like Meh. <laughs> that's so cute that's good that's like the perfect epilogue <laughs> I, wait i have a i have a very good scene that i want to do a very yeah, good yeah, epilogue yeah, yeah. moment which is like it's 10 years down the line we're doing a concert with our giant mech, with Chimera the mech and Chimera the band, and like, crowd is wild. We think this might this is our this is like our second final tour, uh, and we're all coming out, and like, as as we're walking out of the venue, we see a little kid, uh, who who just he you can tell he wasn't there actually attending but he was outside listening to us and he's got his little guitar and he says are you are you really Camara?" and uh we say you know we give him an autograph and we say hey kid this is for you and then we have the mech just drop the flying v <laughs> next to him <laughs> just embed it into the ground Carry on the legacy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Oh, God. Anyone uh... can fly the bee. <laughs> uh... <sighs> oh, wow. So, uh, thank you all for playing the inaugural game of uh, Metal Rush Limit Breakers. Yeah. So that was pretty fun. <laughs> That was fun. fun. That was a lot. Yeah, we can fun. can do a little a little uh, a little scotch of of playtest feedback and chatting about stuff. Yeah, mm. I was I was so worried that we were gonna end up in like a death spiral situation <laughs> where mm. we just had so many broken components and they kept reducing our rolls and that broke more stuff and then right. we used all our stress on that and I was like, oh, we had the opposite. We had a life spiral where it was like the yeah. spiral going out. Right. <laughs> Interesting. Right. I mean, it I kind of overcompensated. Yeah, I, I, it's very I think possible. That, like momentum could have kind of gone the opposite way if we, if we rolled really, really poorly at the very start. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I I think maybe because you usually have a chance to gain like two points towards power or something. Um, yeah, I think like the only thing that I I would be like feedback is like maybe making the points less powerful either making the die larger or just more points it takes to repair something and then maybe. Um... i was also thinking it might be valuable to start with like one or two components just pre-broken right yeah. I think like, okay with, we're going into this not at our be best fun. yeah that also would give you like a little more decision to make on the first leg of the race right it's like i guess i'm also tuning up yeah i yeah. was thinking that yeah. And you could do something interesting with, I really like the way that uh, Apocalypse Keys uh, by Jamila Najati works, where you, uh, you're you also rolling, uh, in that case, 2d6 and adding like a certain amount of resource. And if you get like, you know, it's it's uh, PBTA, so if you get like 7 to 9 is pretty good, 10 plus is really yeah. good. But then if you get a 13 plus, it's like you did too good and mm. things are kind of bad again. Uh, yeah. And that could be really fun for this game now that, that I'm thinking about really. Be, okay, right? you can add like a plus five, 
But then if you roll an eight and get a 13, then you're like, oh, no. Yeah, we're going way too fast. <laughs> we that seems like fast really and... obvious for you overload a component and break it. Like, Right, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Similarly, uh, I wonder if there's a mechanic where you can choose to break or put boxes of damage onto components for a bonus. Oh, that would be so fun. Like that's the push your luck is like, oh well, I'm gonna I'm gonna overdrive this one system for the extra box because we need it. Mm. Uh, and then I wonder about opening up the range bands, because those there there's a lot of options for the low sections. Mm-hmm. Um but we really quickly you saw how fast we could get up to plus five. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if he like you said, Alex, to sort of like cut out the one to 10 options and have that. So like on a one to eight, on a one to five, this yeah. happens on a six to 10, this happens on a mm. 11 to 15. So you've got this bigger range uh-huh. uh, perhaps. So like either uh, stacking modifiers feels fun, right? Yeah. It's so mm-hmm. fun. It's, it, it, there's so it, much adrenaline in this game uh, that I think you want to reward having those big numbers mm-hmm. so either like right bigger dice more dice something make like it that necessary to stack those numbers to succeed right mm-hmm. you want to overload everything to make it feel as dramatic to incentivize people to do that even if it's dangerous mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well that's never gonna happen no, we don't. Unless. We don't revise games unless <laughs> our Patreon, our the unpatreon backers, force our hands. But they're very. But why forcible. would they ever do that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, as it stands, this, this was like the most high octane three hours of gaming <laughs> oh. in so long that, Yay. and, and the, like none of it was. It didn't feel bad to play, Good, right? even right. when it was janky. Uh, I was like, "Oh, I could see how I might hack this myself," but the experience itself was not like, "Oh my god, I this feels bad to oh, <laughs> to be no. playing actively." It was just like it was right. It was distilled into like just the most intense a- action scenes of you know of the race, which I think make is so perfect. It was just yeah. nonstop, you know. Yay. I think the last thing I want to say is I wish we had a little bit more role playing. Mm-hmm. So we had these really fun characters with these great concepts, and we got a little bit of those scenes in the game. But I, you know, I I, I dream of a world where we can have this super <laughs> full nitro racing game and those intense moments in the Fast and Furious kind of things where yeah. you know, we're yelling at each other through the machines and yeah, yeah. Our character dramas and our, mm-hmm. our side schemes and our mm-hmm. working towards our ulterior goals, you know, like mm-hmm. what is what is a passion hack of <laughs> metal rush limit breakers look like? Yes. Oh yeah. that's so good. All right. All well, right. Uh, I well, think that's... thank you all so much. Yeah. Um, we should thank do you to our, our wonderful crowd for watching as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thanks. So much fun seeing everyone in the chat coming up with uh, names and talking about Choco Chacos. Yeah. Coming up with all the greatest ways to spell Chimera. <laughs> yeah. Each one better than the last. Yay, good to have you, Vidya. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, I was going to say Zane and Jinx. <laughs> Adam and Simon, <laughs> do you want to let our viewers know uh, where they can find you on the internet and buy your stuff? Any uh, things you're particularly excited about hyping projects you're working on games you're releasing or have released anything like that yeah Yeah. take it away uh yeah okay so so again i'm adam um i do a lot of stuff in in games um i i design some games uh i'm currently kind of working on some board game stuff which is going to be real exciting you can find me on twitter at crit success underscore uh i also uh am a part of forever gm along with Alex here, which is a, a really super awesome actual play podcast where we do like 
short campaigns of indie games. Uh, we just finished Merkborg, which was super cool, and we're about and we just started Perilous, which is a lot of fun, as Alex knows. <laughs> so good. You can find us at Forever GM. That's with the number four. Sweet. Uh, I'm Simon. You can find me on Twitter at Lucha Libris. I design tabletop role playing games at colorspraygames.itch.io. You can check out some of my fun stuff for Spencer Campbell's Light, um, Destiny Rules Light RPG, which is pretty sweet. Um, I'm going to be working on some more light stuff soon. Uh, so I'm very excited to release that when it comes out. Uh, I am a professional GM for Magpie Games. If you go to magpiegames.com slash curated play, you can find out you can get linked up with me or many other fantastic GMs playing games like Masks, Bluebeard's Bride, and the upcoming Root Role playing game, which I'm also writing a little something something for. You should be seeing that in a couple of months. Um, I am also a voice actor for the Penover Podcast, which is a queer sci-fi and fantasy audio drama. If you want to hear yourself represented in stories, that's at the Penover Pod on Twitter, thepenumberpodcast.com. So good. And Hi, I'm Lara. Do you want to do us? <laughs> yeah, sure. okay, let's do us. Hi, I'm Lara. Uh, I'm also an RPG designer. I think I feel like all of us are. What the hell? Yeah, what are the odds keeps of that? Happening. Um, you can <laughs> find me on Twitter at glavequizarm or glavequizarm.com. Uh, I design weird games about genitals and Victorian theater. <laughs> Not at the same time. These are two different games. No, the uh, cyberpunk genitals. Yeah, they're as cyber as you need them to be. Penis 2.0.77, the uh, <laughs> only cyberpunk genital customization game you need. Available at glaiveguizarm.itch.io. <laughs> That's it. That's that's what I want to. That's what I want on my tombstone. Yeah, that's all go I right care on that. about. Love it. Love it. Uh, I design games at fractaldragon.itch.io or itch.io slash fractaldragon. However, they do it. Uh, <laughs> and I'm also on Forever GM, and I am streaming some games at twitch.tv slash fractaldragon. I might get some friends together to play Sentinels of the Multiverse again this Friday because I love that game so much. <laughs> Uh, so check that out as well. Uh, and of course, Alex and I are unplaytested. You probably know that. You're here. Yeah, if you're watching but... this and you don't know that, what is your life? <laughs> if you've just bungled your way onto this live stream, uh, visit unplaytested.com or join us at Twitter at, at unplaytested. Or if you want to support more of whatever this is, uh, <laughs> go to uh, what is it? Patreon.com slash unplaytested to become an unplaytreon to uh, help us to help us out. Or you can become an unplanetary overlord. <laughs> if you do that, you get a free copy of every game. And by free, I mean you do pay for it because but, you've you know, paid. <laughs> you don't have to get it twice. Yeah. <laughs> um, <sighs> do we have anything else? I think that's we, we should write a script for this. No, we shouldn't. <laughs> this is the this is the live TV energy the crowd yeah. craves. Exactly. Uh, Thanks all right, everyone everybody. Uh, for coming on the show. Thank you so much for our audience. Uh, until next time, fly your mech in its power slide past the finish line of life, and always support Taco Bell. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night.